Hello guys and girls and welcome to the last episode of the F Reality Podcast for 2020. Grab your eggnog and a mince pie and relax as we discuss this week's top VR news. We're going to be talking about the Oculus Elite straps being available to buy again. We have some updates for Population 1 and Medal of Honor. We give you our thoughts on both Myst and Jurassic World Aftermath on the Oculus Quest. And to round up the show, Zim has got some new releases for you to look forward to next week. But for now, let me introduce you to the team and find out what's been their highlight of the week this week. And also let us know what you played in the chat so we can read out some of your highlights too. First up, this guy is definitely suspicious. A master imposter who will pose as the galaxy's most adorable character to avoid detection. It's the one and only Rowdy VR. How you doing? I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing all right. Excited to finally celebrate the end of this year. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that next year will be just a, a little bit better. And uh, it's, it's, I mean, my week has been great though. I mean, I've, 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 I've had a lot of fun just trying to get everything sorted out for Christmas. Uh, so, you know, next week is the, it's the big day. It's also my birthday then. So it's like a, oh, yeah. a double celebration. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> it's, it's always weird to do that on, on a Christmas day. It's going to be the first time here that I'm going to be celebrating it in, in, in Canada. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to, I mean, I won't be able to experience it the way that they usually do it here, I guess, because everything is so close and we're going into another lockdown. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll make it work and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, so yeah nice what have you got planned you're gonna get order in some poutine or like go for a swim on the pool and the roof <laughs> we're, or we're gonna, gonna try do? and make a, a christmas dinner with just two of us uh, and we mm -hmm. also have like a like a little bit like a zoom event planned uh, with my family and, and 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 my wife's family uh, we're gonna try and make it nice like that uh, probably do like a quiz like a christmas christmas quiz um, mm -hmm try and watch some movies or something like that uh, just try and figure out some stuff that we could at least do together even though we're not really uh, together this year yeah uh, but hopefully next year that will be uh, a bit different uh, you know fingers crossed a fingers better. crossed yeah. yeah what about vr wise you've been playing anything this week well i haven't i haven't really played any vr this week except for uh, jurassic park which mm -hmm. we'll be talking about a little bit later uh, so yep. i have tried that what i did do uh well yesterday and the day before yesterday was actually per your suggestion um off podcast uh, a little while ago mike is i watched uh the matrix again the original movie yeah. from 99 uh and I, I mean i've i was pretty i wouldn't say really young but i was a lot younger when i watched it and i pretty much forgot everything that happened in that movie and it's been uh it's been quite cool to see how technology has evolved as well and you know like you can see that we're getting to a point where something like this might become a reality, which I think is pretty, pretty neat in a way. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot in that movie that comes out where you go like, you know, like that could actually be true. You know, that could actually be, you know, the thing that we're living in right now, which I think is a is a very scary thought, but also a, a very um, interesting thing to think about uh, just in general. Yeah, definitely, a hundred percent. And like you know, like you like you said, I, I kind of rewatched the trilogy uh, a few weeks back, and uh, and yeah, I loved. It. I just I just going back and watching it again is just such a magical experience. And especially now, like you know, with like bigger TVs, and you know, like now you can get it in four K and everything else. Um, but still, like the original movie is the best. Like the the sequels. Yeah. I had to push myself through them a little bit. They weren't they yeah. weren't as good as the original movie. Well, but I'm obviously... still planning on, on watching uh, Matrix Reloaded and Matrix Revolutions uh, right. probably during the next week or the week after. Um, but I have I've, I've only watched the first one uh, for right. now. Uh, yeah. And it's it's yeah it's such an awesome movie. I, I really like it. <laughs> and I'm happy that they're 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 on Nathy rocking his <laughs> Matrix glasses. Uh, I'm happy that they're making a fourth one, you know, and it's going to have yeah. Keanu Reeves in, and uh, I can't remember the Trinity. actress's and name. Me, me, yeah, I'm going to be in there too. Apparently, Nathy's uh, one just, of the. Uh, uh, I, I this is my announcement. I'm going to be in a movie. I'm just Nathy just needs one. one of those a twin brother now, and then he could be the the, the twins with the dreadlocks. He's like got that pasty complexion to him. Yeah. <laughs> could or, be or, 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 those um, guys. I was I was that that, that uh, the the girl co uh, co um, called with the white hair. Um, oh, oh, switch! No, switch, switch. Yeah. yeah, that was it. Switch. You you can not, be a robot. not like this. <laughs> not like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, good, good to see that you're uh, you're you're having fun anyway and uh, gearing up for the holidays. So next up, this guy is a lone wolf. He will go full Leroy Jenkins on you if uh, if you're down. He'll leave you for dead because he's back for blood. <laughs> <laughs> it's my Frisian friend. It's of course Nathy. How are you doing, dude? Yeah, I'm doing. I'm doing great. I I uh, played Back for Blood yesterday with you, Mike. 
Yeah, it's amazing. you left me for dead. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. Like, I was like, this noob, uh, sorry, you're a waste of my time. Uh, and, and, and then I, he gets like, wrecked. Team wipe. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it, it's an amazing game. It's a, it's a zombie title from uh, Total Rock Studios, uh, who also yeah. made uh, Left 4 Dead. Uh, this definitely plays and feels like Left 4 Dead. It, it, like, no shame. Uh, yeah. it, it's it's great. I really really enjoyed playing it yesterday. I was a bit concerned that you know that old school formula of just shooting zombies, and getting through waves and waves, and getting to the other side wasn't that fun. But with the new visuals and the, the gameplay mechanics being so updated, I still think it's 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 something that you wanna you wanna play. Yeah. Yeah. It's not in VR though. We should stress that. No, it's, it's not. not it's not in VR. Sorry. Spoiler alert, not VR. Aww. Yet, yet, someone's going to crack that at some stage. And then you're going to get, you know, projectile boomered from across the room. I know that's not the right I would love that so game, much. But... I would love that so much. Please, Turtle Rock. Please. <laughs> it's good. To be honest, it, like, as a Left 4 Dead fan, I thought I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I played it launch yeah. day and, uh, or launch day for closed alpha access. You know, gaming these days is so freaking weird, isn't it? But yeah. uh, as a Left 4 Dead fan, like... It, they definitely changed up a lot of the bad guys. Like the scale of the enemies is serious Sam level. Um, yeah. If you're like, oh shit, that's why immediately when I saw that stuff, it was like, I want this in VR. But um, mm. yeah, I don't know. It felt flat for me, but I, I just I, I I wanted like the first two run throughs that I did and tried it on Nightmare as well. Like I thought it was it was really impressive, like the lighting and and all that. Mm -hmm. But that's because I think I don't play many flat games and you know the way <laughs> graphics look these days like I, friends of mine are telling yeah, me yeah, I, I this isn't like, that impressive but you yeah know, i it, thought graphically it wasn't like it didn't blow my mind necessarily but uh yeah. the, the enemies and stuff were really you know entertaining and and also the you have like you have cards that you can pick before you play so it's almost like a strategical kind of like uh thing you have to do where um, you unlock cards along the way too, and you can also find them in the in the levels. Yep. So mm -hmm. you can change your own gameplay and also <laughs> communicate with friends or strangers. Like, listen, I'm gonna pull this card. What card are you gonna pull? And the zombies can also pull cards. So it, it's really funny how they mix that up. No, I thought it was very entertaining. Yep. Um, maybe I was just hungry for more pancake because I I didn't think we got that much. Uh, VR uh, stuff this year that I just wanted some, you know. That card mm -hmm. mechanic is weird. Like I, I definitely wasn't expecting it, and the fact I like the fact that they took the AI director from the original game and actually exposed the dice roll. Like y it'll tell you what you're getting in the level you're about to play in terms mm -hmm. of the really hard bad guys, the the add-ons that they get as it yeah. as it goes on, and then you yeah. get that benefit as well. So it's neat. I found that bit a little bit overwhelming. Like, did you find you kind of gelled with the card system easily enough or did you find it confusing at all no i well, liked it yeah, yeah no, i thought it was pretty straightforward it's fun. like it was like every time you played and then you finished it you're like okay hmm, which card should i pick and really thinking about that i, I like it where it's like mm. you really like what did i just play and what is going to mm. happen next and what could you know it's kind of like using your imagination a bit so yeah. no i i it's kind of funny that's something that you don't see that much in games where usually you just play and it just does everything for you but here it's like you can yeah. i don't know uh it wasn't annoying like some games use it and you're like oh because it's more microtransaction stuff where it's like i need to buy these cards yeah uh, but here it's no no I, I thought that overall uh solid uh first impression fun experience there. right and i don't know how many yeah. levels the uh the the thing is going to get when it's finally out but no. Nice set of characters, finally. That was good, because yeah. that was a bit of a weak point in Left 4 Dead 2, was the characters. And the characters feel really sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Anything you want you played in VR that you want to share this week? Well, uh, just like Rowdy, I played, uh, you know, uh, Jurassic. So uh, that's something yep. we're going to talk about later. Yep. Um, and I should also point out our stream is having some uh, difficulties because we're just so awesome that the internet can't handle it. So uh, there we go. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. But yeah, hopefully we'll get through it anyway. Um, so, next up, the big question is, who shot first? Was it this guy or was it Greedo? <laughs> this guy always shoots first. It's VR streamer, <laughs> ZimTok5. How Thank, you doing, dude? Thanks, Mike. I definitely shot him a few times. Um, that was that was for me playing the Star Wars experience. I won't go much into because I don't have much to add to what I think Nathan and Mike have said before. It's a bit of a mediocre experience and eh, it was all right. So, yeah, I think for me, coming into the holidays, the main thing is just getting time um 
playing VR kind of for myself to some extent, but I've been doing a lot of Rec Room. Uh, mm -hmm. Rec Room has brought me in for a number of reasons. Um, they had, <laughs> actually, Nathy pulled, you know, got me back into Rec Room about a month ago, maybe three weeks ago. Oh, yeah, we played this together, Rec event. Right. Yeah, yeah, we did. We played and, it. Yeah. And, and it was really cool because uh, you could go along and there were these like, um, it was like going to a proper convention hall, but in Rec oh, Room. Yeah, and then yeah, you'd yeah, go yeah. like almost like carriages of a train. You'd go from room to room, and there'd be different sellers, and some of them would be giving away free things, like you could pick up an item that someone had created, and you could just take a copy of that, so if you wanted to put it in your dorm room or whatever. And um, this week, they dropped a kind of like snowy update with this holiday marketplace, uh, which was really neat, actually. So I kind of went along to that, and I thought that was really fun. And then inevitably, the, there's one experience different than the rec market, where you get some free root beer, yeah, it's like 50 rec tokens for root beer. So beer. it's not like a big deal. Like it's not, it's not a big deal at all. I went to the Xbox one as well, which is really cool. Um, oh, yeah, because they've released on like consoles yeah. now as well, which is yeah. amazing. And they're so, doing super well on yeah, consoles. Yeah, they're doing oh, insanely well. They're absolutely wow. like, and, and the console players are loving it. I met loads of people for like, like Xbox and stuff, and I was just talking to them. We were playing pool. There's a cool pool mechanic in that Xbox room. You get a Master Chief helmet, all this kind of trinkety stuff, right? But yeah, um, it was cool to go along to that. Like, I used to take my daughter along to the conventions in the UK, and it felt like I was there with her again, which is really nice because we were playing together. Um, and then there was an experience. If anyone hasn't done parkour uh, maps in, parkour. in, in Rec Room. <laughs> I was thinking to say things. It, 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 they're really good. They're really good. Like, um, and, and there's one called Black, I think it's Black underscore White. So Black and White Parkour at the minute. And it's really well done. It'll take you maybe half an hour, 40 minutes to clear it. But we like made friends along the way and it was just a really great experience. So um, if anyone's really in, dipping into Rec Room, there's so much in that game to offer. Just like you, VR chat. Um, it's great. Are you still building assets in the, in the game, Zim? <sighs> no, it kicked my ass. Um, I don't know. I, I really had <laughs> fuel under the fire, especially after we uh, talked with Sean from Rec Room mm -hmm. a couple of yeah. months ago. And looking also at like tra the trajectory of what people are creating... I, I think I got a little bit um, overwhelmed by how many hours you got to put in to get something out, like anything in a coding or development side. But what you can what you can do, and I've just started to do, is you can create your own objects. Like I created a cardboard box, just silly kind of half-life reference. You, yeah. you know, in, in my dorm room, I'm just like, I, I made this thing, and I have a pumpkin and stuff like that. But um, beyond that point, nothing with, you know, anything complicated. <clears throat> But now's the time. Like, if, if, if you're going to get into something, you can actually make money. I know they just mentioned how they paid out more than a million dollars to creators this year because you can actually make, uh, make stuff from this. And, like, the holiday market, you can go along and you can get rec tokens uh, just by playing the game. And you can, you can pick up stuff for free, which is what I like going to these markets for. But then usually the sellers also have, like, an item or two that's paid. And you use your in-game tokens for that. And it's like... I don't know. I just I think that's a really fair system, and it's a good way that Rec Room can make money and stay alive. Uh, but not just that, that their creators are incentivized, just like YouTubers are incentivized to create for its platform mm -hmm. uh, to, to yeah. put you know quality that's stuff correct. together. So good, I love it. It's a great strategy. ecosystem. Feels there, is, there is someone like someone will be like doing it full time in maybe a year or two. Yeah, it's going to happen. Like, and same I for see, the I chat, you know. Uh, yeah, the first crazy. person to earn a million bucks from from rec room assets, we need yeah. to have them on the show. Yeah. Oh, absolutely! That sounds like a great that's that's like a great interview. It's like yeah. <laughs> how much time have you put into this? But I wonder yeah. what it's going to be for. If it's like custom skins or actually games in there, because normally it's assets that people are are paying for, you know. But anyway, rec room is great. I I recommend it, and it's free, so there's no reason kind of not to play it. The only thing that I would say is, like VR chat, just be. <laughs> Be, have a little bit of armor when you go in. What I mean by that is expect you're going to have one or two bad experiences with a person. But once you push past that, making friends on that is so easy. So yeah. easy. And it's available on every platform now. It's even available on your phone. Yeah. So, and it works yeah. great. It's crazy. Pretty cool. Yeah. Nice. Um, so let's uh, see what the chat have been up to this week. Um, what they've been playing, what they would recommend. Mm. Yeah. So we have a Conrad who played um, DCS World and Half Life Alex. Uh, Nico Cleric has been playing Medal of Honor. Um, Wardy spent a week uh, playing around with the graphics settings in Project Cars 2. LOL. So wow. Apparently it's, it was still fun. 
Um, and then we have uh, Darja Angel, who uh, wasted time on Tokyo Kronos, finished Cubism, and grinded away in Solaris. So there you go. Nice. Okay. Well, my highlight was um, was Jurassic World also. So um, we'll talk about that together as sort of like our collective review of the game later on in the show. So let's jump straight into the news. Although before we get into the news, the one thing I need to do is remind you that, uh, of course, this is the last F Reality podcast of the year. We're going to be back yeah. uh, in the new year delivering you the freshest VR news uh, every Saturday, uh, starting from Saturday the 2nd of January. So it's only one week we're going to be missing out, but I hope you understand. Mm. Um, also, uh, to sort of have a little send-off, we're going to be hosting an F Reality Christmas party in Alt Space tonight after the show. Uh, the event will be held at 9 p.m. UK time, 10 p.m. in Europe, 1 p.m. Pacific time and will be in a sort of private instance of the screen door effect club uh, Which is going to be pretty lit all you need to do to prevent prepare for the event is to download the alt space app Which is available for free on quest and PC VR headsets via oculus and steam um, I think we've added the link to the event in the description of this live yeah. stream so all you need to do is click on that link, uh, basically log in with your Altspace account, and then that'll be added. Uh, if you just click on the star or say that you're interested in going, it'll be in your sort of events page when you go into the app uh, later on. Uh, we'll be sharing the links again on Twitter and Facebook and maybe our YouTube community page uh, as well. So if you don't, if you miss it during the live stream, we'll post it again later on. So uh, party of the year. Yeah, it'd be just cool if you can come and hang out with us. Um, you know, we've done this before and it's been really fun to kind of meet some of uh, our audience and just kind of hang out for a bit and sort of chill. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So, yeah, if you can make it, it'd be great to see you all there. It's cool club. Um, cool club. Yeah. So let's get into some news then, because the first bit of news we got this week is that the Oculus Quest 2 Elite Strap and Elite Battery Strap are now back in stock on the official Oculus website. Uh, if you follow the podcast, you'll know that we've talked about this, uh, you know, a couple of months back. That basically Oculus pulled the Elite straps from their official store and like Amazon and other resellers uh, after numerous reports from consumers who experienced the strap arms breaking, even when they were being really careful with them. It seems like a some sort of manufacturing defect happened during the, the manufacturing process, which made them particularly weak. Um, but it seems like Oculus have investigated the issue and in a statement to upload VR, they said that there was a processing inconsistency with some early batches of the straps. Um, and now they've sort of released them back uh, on sale after their investigation. Mm -hmm. And to sort of reassure the VR community, they're, all, they're now offering a two year warranty on both their elite straps uh, and say that they'll offer free replacements if you have any issues within two years. So I think that's pretty reassuring i think it's also a fair warranty period that's pretty typical what you get i mean right i wouldn't expect more than two or three years you, alarm bells start to go off when you see one year uh, you see one year on a product you're like nah, you know there's a problem <laughs> i'm glad they're back right. because i know there's a lot of people who you know said to me that they are frustrated that they can't upgrade the experience to some extent i mean i know it's not for everybody i know it's very much i guess the feeling is like 70 percent of people who get it are kind of pleased with it um, and for some people, their just head shape doesn't support it. But um, I think it's an upgrade. I think it's a, for me, it, standing in the middle of a room, playing VR for hours, and I do mean hours, like it, it helps you last longer. Comfortable. Yeah. So. Definitely, 100%. Yeah. Like for me, the original elastic strap feels like my head is a watermelon and someone's just putting elastic bands on it over and over again. <laughs> and my head is just going to explode. You know, like after a short amount of time. And I think, you know, for the price, especially of the, the cheaper one, the Elite Strap, which is like 49 US dollars or 49 British pounds, you know, it's worth that investment, I think, yeah. to make the headset more comfortable, like you say, for longer periods of gaming. Um, but what do you what do you guys think? Do you do you guys use the Elite Strap? What about you, Rad? I think you've got the original strap there, right? I, st I still have the original strap. I kind of waited with getting uh, the Elite Strap because I knew there were going to be issues with it. Uh, so yeah. I just want those to get ironed out first before I purchase uh, something. I'll probably wait still a little bit longer. Uh, there's mm -hmm. still a couple of things I want to get first. Like uh, I still want to get like a link cable or like something that will make my experience with virtual desktop a, a bit smoother yeah. uh, mm -hmm. since I'm still on a, on a wireless connection. So I'm, I'm th those are the things I'm going to invest in first to get like a proper VR uh, experience when, when I mean, it's, it's all right now. I just want to 
to be like the best it can be. Uh, so yeah. those are the things. I, also something I, I want to upgrade because I, I got it actually next to me. I'm not a big fan of this of this fabric that is on here, which oh. which comes original, uh, because it, it starts like for some reason it starts to itch my skin. Maybe it's because I got like a little bit of a beard nope. or something. I'm the same. Like, I, I get I get irritated same. face from the original yeah, foam. Exactly. It's not like, good. Uh, if if I play, I mean it's not. I can play easily for a couple of hours, but I just notice it when I when I have it on my face the entire time. It's not like I. I take it off and I got like all like red bands around here because uh, of skin irritation or something. That's mm -hmm. not the problem, but I, I do find it an irritating kind of fabric. So I'll probably get like an upgrade for that as well before I get uh, the elite strap because it, it's a little bit more pressing. So some 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 toilet paper from the house around your uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so well, wait maybe. wait wait we, we got to see this though. You got to you got to take a picture like Raccoon Rowdy. You know you could be a new a new character <laughs> yeah. in the new year. Bust out and just come in with these red circles. <laughs> What about you, Nate? Are you rocking it. the uh, elite strap or? Yeah, no, I, I, I like, I, I definitely like the elite strap. Uh, I do like the standard elite strap more than the one with the battery. No. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think, I think the the back part makes it a little bit uncomfy uh, for some reason. The weight uh, at the back, but, you mean? Yeah, no, no, it's well, not necessarily the weight, but it's a very hard piece that kind of sits on the back, and you can kind of feel that sitting around. Um, I think with the normal, the standard one, it's already balanced out enough, so it's mm -hmm. it's not yep. adding more comfort in that sense. Um, but yeah, of course, no, yeah, I... you get more juice, so it's really nice. But I, yeah, it's a bit less. Uh... Yeah, I would agree with you actually. Having used both for a, a long period of time now, the I would prefer to use the original Elite strap. Yeah. But I do like the battery, so I yeah, I course. just persevere with it and just yeah, put yeah, up with exactly. it. Yeah. Uh, it's not Does like the battery now like balance it out a little bit, so it's like not a really, bit more um, comfortable. not really. I would say I would say like the like like you guys said, you know the. Uh, uh, the original Elite Strap does a, a good job of doing that anyway. Mm. Um, it's just a little bit heavier, so. Um, but I do I do like the extra battery, and what I also like about the Elite Battery Strap is that in the main menu, when you hover over your sort of like headset, it gives you a battery percentage. You also get a battery percentage of the strap battery, so you know that's really useful, and it will drain it will drain the strap completely and then move on to the headset. Mm, so it's yeah. kind of smart in a way, and I do yeah. really like that. That's something yeah. that doesn't appear or if you use an external like battery. Yeah, see, exactly. I'm in Rowdy's camp where having the battery weight in my pocket as opposed to on my head is is preferable to me. And I think that strap for 50 is a little bit easier to swallow than yeah. that and the case. And if anyone's wondering like, oh, these are available again, should I get the case too? You don't have yeah, to. You really is... don't have to. Oh, I, I rarely actually charge my uh, my headset with this. I just have this <laughs> yeah, and I can I can play for, I think, 20 for to 40 years. hours almost with this. Uh, it's it's yeah. like insane how many just hours I can get <laughs> Yeah, and it actually charges my laptop. My um, it actually charges my headset as well when I'm when I'm playing with it. So that's yeah. actually kind of nice. Uh, even if it's dead, I can just plug that in and uh, it boots right up and starts yeah. charging from one percent up until exactly. As long as you have as long as you have enough of uh, wattage on the battery, enough capacity in the battery, and the right that's USB C yeah. cable. Um, because if you have a lower grade cable or your USB two connection converting into mm -hmm. USB C, it won't yeah. prop the battery the, the up. It'll battery just slowly that I have die. Actually, has a, a USB C. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. I'm yeah. Because I have the focus. A USB C fast uh, charging port. Uh, yeah. So it's actually it's. I mean it's it's a great. I mean it's expensive. Like don't don't get me wrong. This was also but like it, a, like I think like a hundred euros. So it's an it's an expensive battery, but it's got like sixteen thousand something. Uh, so it's it can charge my my headset like a couple <laughs> you, of times over. You know those batteries are fun. Uh, I had it this week where my car wouldn't start because you know COVID and it's just sitting there or whatever. I have one of those batteries which you just connect to the battery terminals of your car and start the car with it. But it's basically just an external battery pack like that, and it, yeah. it's great. You can just like back and start the car off <laughs> an external battery or use it with your Quest if you're stuck with a flat tire and need some entertainment. <laughs> I think the oh. only thing, like you say, about the Elite battery strap is that you have to buy it as a bundle with the case, which works out to be like $129 or I think it's 119 British pounds, which yeah. is super expensive. I wish they would just sell it separately. But Stupid. Stupid. I think, I think I still think, in my opinion, both the standard strap, uh, Elite strap, and the one with the battery are overpriced. They should be cheaper. Uh, but, uh, well, people think, want I to think... buy them anyways because they, they use it in their favor. I still think they're too expensive. 
Uh, yeah. I, the thing is, like, uh, for comfort, I'd pay any amount of money. You know. Yeah, well, that, that's think... why that's why they are expensive. Correct. Yeah, Maybe. I'm with Nathy on this. I think <laughs> I think they're overpriced. I think they're overpriced for what they are, especially when you pull the elite strap out and you're like, fifty quid for a little like twangy piece of plastic. It seems, especially because I'm, you know, I had mine screws fell out of it after three weeks of use, and not heavy use, just moderate use. Hmm. Um, so for the money, like, I really like it. But I feel like it's it did have some problems. But now it's available again, so you can at least yeah, buy you one. send yours so back. Actually, I didn't in the end. They actually they arranged um, a return for me, and in the end, I said, guys, if you can't confirm that we're going to send me is any different, why am I losing two weeks to send this to you so you can send me mm -hmm. another one? Like, there's no point. Mm -hmm. So I just repaired it myself, and I've just been using it. I said, and if it, it breaks, if it, it breaks on the sides, because the way that it broke for me was screws were falling out of this back plastic yeah, grommet. There's surprising. one there and one there. Uh, which yeah. you can get at. I thought you'd have to break this to, to get at it, but you don't. It's a big bend and it's very awkward. Um, but if it breaks, of course, across the plastic, it's going back. Right? But it hasn't yeah, but done you, that to me. You do understand that the back part doesn't go in front of your face, but on the neck part? <laughs> oh, that's it. <laughs> it, actually, it actually brings about a bit of a question as well. And I saw it popping up in the chat from uh, Mark Schneider. Uh, he's saying, so how cheap is the Facebook Quest since you need a better head strap, you need better foam, you need more battery life. Do you also need better grips for the controllers? You need a what case, apparently. Also, 600. Case. It's 600 all, all in, in my opinion. 600. Yeah. But, yeah. but the, the question, I think, is what, which of these upgrades do you believe are essential? Do you think all of these are essential, like the better foam, the head I strap? Think I think for me, like the two essential upgrades, in my opinion, are like a VR cover kit, which is like thirty bucks, yep. and then the the elite, uh, the uh, normal elite strap, which is fifty bucks. I agree. So with you. you're 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 spending a little bit less than the original price of the Quest to get a super comfy headset. When straps. I gave my first early impressions from the headset, is that I kind of felt that those should have been included. Uh, because they would have made the headset so much better. Of course, it drops, it increases the price. Uh, they, they wanted to sell it as cheap as possible. But I do feel that the upgrades that Mike just mentioned are kind of essential to have a good uh, experience. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think I think the most pyramid, people though. don't care, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I, think of the pyramid. The sale pyramid yeah. is going to be like, most people aren't going to give a damn. Uh, then you got the mid-tier mid who like are going to have to upgrade with those things. That's why I think if you're, if you're a reasonable like gamer who's going to be using this thing for hours and using it regularly... The, the upgrades that you mentioned are must-haves, and nice to have is ProStrap from ProTube. That, it, or a similar grip to be able to be hands-free with it is just such a nice quality of life improvement. And the fourth one, which I mentioned last week, which again, I like and I've done on a couple of the quests now, is the magnetic connector so that you're not killing your yeah. USB-C yeah. port. But between those so, four so things, it like doesn't, doesn't need anything more. Portable headset. You, you start out with the base package, and then yeah. as time yeah. goes on and you like it, you yeah. start adding things to it that might make your experience better. That's a nice yeah. strategy. Yeah, and, and just for those asking in the chat, they were those grips were made from ProTube, right, uh, Zim? Yeah, they're from ProTube. Yeah. They're called the Pro Straps. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Um, so yeah, that is the Elite uh, Battery Strap and the Elite Strap are back available for sale on the official Oculus Store. I don't think they're available on Amazon just yet, but um, oh, no. you know, it won't be long before they're back available there as well. Um, so that is that. Mm. Next bit of news is about one of our favorite VR games. We talk about it all the time. That is, of course, Population <laughs> One. They dropped another awesome update this week, uh, which included ice structures and snow in the plains area of the map, uh, offering some new opportunities to get the drop on your enemies. And they also added a new bot, bot battle mode, allowing oh, you to team... Bot battle mode, bot battle. say that a few times, uh, allowing you to team up with your friends uh, to fight against some AI bots. So uh, mm. I checked this out um, yesterday with my brother and uh, a friend of mine, and you still need to have a team of three. So you can't just you can just drop, drop in solo. Uh, you can you can play it solo with some varying difficulties, or you can drop in as a team of three. If you don't have a team of three, then you'll get paired up with some random, and then you'll jump online together. And then instead of uh, sort of jumping in and you're seeing all your players at the starting line before you jump into the pods you'll just see a line of bots and they all just jump in the pods together and take off um and then you have to fight them throughout the match and sort of just as the the original battle royale plays out but just with with bots um the thing is like what i found was because i was expecting it to be super easy is that it wasn't easy it actually poses a different challenge and i don't think it's the same challenge that a, that, that human players provide and it's because these bots they work in like teams of three, like te teams of three Terminators, and they're so freaking aggressive <laughs> that I found myself on a couple of occasions being surrounded by three groups of three, like from all different angles, 
And like managing my ammo was actually quite hard because I was just yeah. running out yeah. because there's so many of them. They're not necessarily hard to kill, but with the amount of them and dealing with them the all at the same time is challenging. Yeah. yeah. Did you find the same things, Sim? I found the ammo management thing was a piece. I found yeah. that I was, unlike with human players, I more often than not, I was I was kind of playing, uh, I was playing this game of like, I'm, I'm getting like barraged all the time. Um, like I, I like the winter updates and stuff, but but from like the thing for me with the bots, I was kind of expecting their their player model to look a little bit more distinct from a player, from an actual player. Like they they look a bit um, like they're wearing a hat, like they're wearing a cake tin on their head. And I yeah, thought it would be larger be and wider. Tower, I thought it was yeah. going to be yeah. a little bit more um, pronounced than it than it is. But I played solo, um, and that's the video I'm showing. I played solo on, just to check out kind of the planes update, see how the sight lines had changed. Um, what I didn't realize was that the observatory or whatever had turned into a giant Christmas decoration. Uh, it's yeah. just this giant red ball. I thought that was kind of cute. Um, but the bots themselves, like, not this, this is the problem I have with bots, is that once you develop bot AI, unless you develop some form of like variation in the bot AI, then they can feel like the same player coming at you. And I, I had the same problem that we had with Frostpoint, with Medal of Honor's multiplayer bots, with these bots, which is just, they just feel like, okay, I'm getting attacked with vanilla. Where's chocolate? Where's strawberry? I don't have these other flavors of bots. And I, I really want that when I'm playing on my own. But the thing I do think that it's really nice is they've allowed you now to kind of in a tutorial mode now against these bots, you can solo against the bot and just get better, right? You can And you can yeah. pick the bot difficulty. There are three tiers of difficulty. Um, I went for the toughest and I did find them to be quite a challenge. Um, but I, I got maybe five or six kills before going down myself, you know? So it, it was so, all right, it was all right. So I think they're a decent, uh, decent update. What's the reason why they did this, this update? I, I think, uh, I think it's it nice. accessible for single yeah. players. Initially, I was like you, Nathy. I thought, I thought, ah, this is they're getting ready for the game to be empty. That was my Im immediate impression. But I think it's because they want it to be accessible to people who okay. pick up the headset and don't have friends okay. to play with. Mm -hmm. I, I, think I also well. think that the timing is important, since of course this game has been out now for a little while, and there are, there are some players that are just ridiculously good in this. And mm. you know, depending on the time zone that you're playing it, you know, it will get tougher as well. And I think a lot of people might be scared by that initial thought when they jump in and they don't know what's going on, and you know, they die every round like as soon as they encounter someone. And this gives them a little bit of a a bit more leeway in order to to practice and in order to know the map a bit better before they go into you know the actual playing against players well also a good reason is if they go in maintenance they can just uh, uh throw this bot uh, thing online mm -hmm. uh, and and in the meanwhile just work on something else so they can keep it still online people could still buy stuff too maybe uh, mm -hmm. so they can kind of keep the game rolling i can imagine like a almost like a robo recall bot comes over to you and goes Yep, 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 and he goes like, "Nice skin, Nathy." <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> did you get that premium? Sure. No, I'm sorry. Don't, don't do that, please, <laughs> please don't do that. Please don't do that. <laughs> I'm giving them ideas, Sim. <laughs> I do think it is nice for people that maybe find online multiplayer a bit intimidating, you know. And it, I think you know it's still got that real social element. So if you've got a group of friends, you can jump in, and you know, although the bots do offer a challenge, they're different from playing yeah. online with other people. So I think it's a nice option to have i think it's it's yeah, yeah. super good and i think it's a good way to warm up as well like me yeah. and the guys were like warming up with the bots and then we went into the multiplayer and then we got two wins on the bounce and i was like yeah. this is great yeah it's co-op yeah. co-op co-op is like the yeah. it's the biggest secret i think in vr and one of its best uh use cases is like if you if you have one two three four friends you can play these multiplayer games together not necessarily competitive games but even like walkabout mini golf which you know dropped a new map and stuff this week um to finally finish off their set games like this where you can where you can kind of play together even if it's against a computer or whatever or together like working on something definitely feel the most wholesome compared mm -hmm. to just strictly online multiplayer competitive stuff yeah absolutely and i think you know big box uh i think they're really setting a good example of what can be done with an online multiplayer game in the vr space you know regular updates regular events community engagement you know, they're really killing it right now. And I wish more games will take a note of this and say, this is how a company does it really well and keeps that engagement and keeps players coming back for more. And I think retention wise, I would imagine that Population One has probably got one of the biggest retention of players 
yeah. of any VR app available on the Quest at the moment. Yeah, I'm curious how it's going to push you through next year um, because I, I do think they will have some challenges getting people back. Right now, they still have a lot of room to do new stuff, but there will be a moment where you have to kind of think even more creative than you did before. Yeah, I, well, I think I think the obvious mode is like this, the 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 one mode, right, where it's you versus a, a whole map, and it's just one player wins. And Solo that's battle gonna, royale. And I, I I think that will. When it starts to stagnate, they'll drop that yeah, and then yeah, it'll yeah. take so off kind again. Of waiting yeah, things out. I think yeah. so. I well, think so. Well, I got to yeah. be honest. Like pop, pop one for me. It was it was cocaine in the first couple of weeks, but now I'm. It's weird because I don't like being baited into doing stuff. I've never liked that in game design. And and although I have to applaud them to, for not be for being for being varied in their content and for being so well pipelined, like they're really dropping cool stuff every so often. Yeah. I'm starting to burn out on the game a bit. Like I, I, I'm purposefully now sitting back from it and going like, will I play that? And I don't feel as kind of drawn to it at the minute, but um, I wonder if, if they, that'll um, change based on what they what they drop next. Do you, do you think instead of like cosmetic changes or like map variants that maybe some core gameplay mecha mechanic change will draw you back in? Oh yeah, if they, if they instead of keeping the current map, forced, uh, forced dropped an entirely new world. I would play mm. that for a week or two uh, because I think that type of change gives you enough to explore. Then I would be happy to live for a month or two on cosmetic changes, you know, because uh, the, like the planes changing, that's a material change. Anyone who dropped in when they were the hay bales, that place was a feckin' nightmare. You yeah, know, you, you would just get owned in that. So yeah, because with this Chris, these up. Christmas updates, it's only snow. And yeah, I saw some crystals sticking out of like the, you know, some ice sticking out of like the ground. But yeah, you're right. Like if you really change, like what Fortnite did, you know, suddenly like uh, Thanos is attacking the earth, uh, the ground, there's like a crater in the middle suddenly and the whole game, you know, and there's like certain items that you can find that uh, came from outer space. Like just look at Fortnite. I mean, they but it comes with seasons messed... as well. It's not like yeah, yeah, yeah. every week that yeah. they change that, but that's like no. you know a season. Well, they they will only change it quicker if they see the player base decrease a little. As Mike said, they're just keeping updates kind of uh, in stock, and then the moment when they need one, they just launch it. I think it's smart because with VR, you never know. Like there could be yeah. next year another Battle Royale or some other multiplayer being real good, and people just get into VR scene so easy all the time. Very fickle. Uh, so. <laughs> I don't know. Um, also, our stream some some uh, funny funky issues. Yeah. Um, well, I think audio wise it's fine. It's just yeah, the video is a bit choppy. It, yeah. yeah. There's not much we can do. I don't know what it is. It's something ISP related. It looks yeah. like so. We can try to blow out the fire. Only thing I'll say is, um, good thing is the recording should be solid. So even if the, we have a problem live, we'll we'll get it uploaded after. No. Nice. Okay. Uh, but yeah, some solid updates from Big Box for Population 1. It'd be interesting to see, to track it over next year and see if it yeah. sort of reigns uh, the number one spot in terms of VR multiplayer. Someone uh, said year. like they should bring Smashbox Arena also to Quest. <laughs> I Maybe would it could, agree. It could, it could be a good time. It could I be a good agree. time to that's do a, that. That's a good title. That's a good title. Um, I yeah, enjoyed think, it. I think uh, it. I think it didn't get its moment in the sun. I think, they I think it do, missed just, its they should, You know what they should do? They should do like a throwback to Smashbox in Population 1 somewhere, like an Easter egg. I don't know. <laughs> that's not happening. <laughs> no? <laughs> no? Why not? I don't know. This seems a bit, a bit of a weird one. Some fruity things in there. This is a good thing, though. Maybe in January we should, uh, we should tack that onto the list of things to talk about, which is like, what are the games that you really want to see revisited? For for example, either ported to Quest or something that you know the the PC VR market has been starved of. You know, we've all been you know the, like for instance, PC VR market has been starved of Resident Evil because it's just there on PlayStation and it's mm -hmm. sitting there yeah. in that slowly becoming crypt of a. <laughs> of a platform but you know i would love to, i'd love to see you know our thoughts on that crisscross uh, yeah we'll definitely January. talk about that next week for sure like yeah. plans yeah. a recap of last of this year two weeks from now what we what we want uh, in the future for yeah. sure we'll do that next yeah uh, do, two do weeks from now VR two, you mean yeah okay of yeah. course yeah, yeah of course yeah. Um, but of course, Population 1 wasn't the only VR game to get updates uh, this week. We also got some updates to Medal of Honor. And it's interesting because they were addressing some of the issues we talked about on last week's show. Uh, yeah. And Respawn has pushed out two updates since then, which is pretty commendable, I think. Um, and I've got a sort of list of some of the, the highlights from these uh, updates. They've added uh, smooth turning, 
They've removed the victory screen from every level now, so it now just shows on the completion of the six main missions, which is good. Uh, weapon pickups have been made more accurate in the shooting range, so when you go, go to grab a weapon, it's more <laughs> accurate because that was a little bit off for some bizarre reason. Very frustrating, uh, that bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all the gallery content is now unlocked from the very beginning of the game, so you don't have to unlock it throughout your progress, which is also pretty good if you just want to sit through it, get a feeling of like the kind of like stories from these World War uh, veterans. Do you still um, think that that could have been like optional where someone's like, I do want to unlock that and you can just choose between the two? Because I still think it, it kind of has something interesting to yeah, that, to be I'm, able to that's unlock very... those parts. Because the the 360s and certain video parts, they matched the mission. So I thought it was kind of cool to have that. I don't know, but... Yeah. Uh, you know, like I'm, totally, the option, yeah, I'm totally with you on that, Nathy. I, I think they should further tweak that and allow the option if you want to be unlocking that content, I lock it away for me, you know, um, mm. I would I would opt for that. I would opt for that because I, I like that feeling of progress. I know it's a little bit odd. Uh, it doesn't really have a parallel with other games, yeah. but I, I, yeah, I would be someone who would use that toggle. Mm. Yeah. Okay, interesting, yeah. Um, they've also made the M1 Garand ping louder, <laughs> love that. which is great. Fucking love uh, that. It's something we complained about. Um, they've added more graphical options, so you can tweak the settings to get the most out of the game if you're not running on like the most optimal hardware. Uh, even if that... you do run on the optimal hardware, uh, it's also kind yeah, of... Yeah, but I was going to say, like that, that, of all the updates that they've released so far, control certain features on a switchboard yeah. for your graphical settings, so you have some control over the performance of the game and can tinker with it, is the but best update like, that they've released then, so but that far. should be standard like they are like this is one of those rare opportunities where you get like to choose three settings and it's freaking strange oh. uh usually that's normal right where you just pick different graphical settings yeah. so okay yeah. well that is that they've also yeah. removed star ranks for em for enemies uh they're turned off by default now um yeah, and i i always thought it was kind of a strange design choice yeah. especially if they're going for like an authentic world war ii experience that enemies have like stars above their heads um, so I'm glad that they've turned that off by There's default. There's another game, uh, Phantom Covert Ops, I think, does that, where you can see above the heads of the enemy like how difficult they are. Mm -hmm. um, I, I disabled it. I think most immersion seekers yeah. would disable it. I'm wondering, yeah. I don't remember if at the start of the game I opted into, if they've got analytics in the game, they might have already seen that, like, oh, 55% of players are opting this off. Turning so it off anyway. They yeah. changed, yeah, they just changed I, the setting. I, I honestly never felt like one uh, soldier was better than the other. <laughs> with, with or without it was like no. the same thing so i don't know what that even means man yeah uh, that's true that's true <laughs> um they've now toggled arm sleeves and they hide them now when they're close to players eye, uh, eyes aiming down the sights of guns yeah. so okay. oh. they don't get into your way because they were a little bit intrusive when you were using some weapons mm -hmm. um they're adding 3d scopes in the future they've said that that is coming which oh. is really nice so they're getting rid of that kind of like flat scope whole sort of peripheral view thing and they're moving on to 3D scopes, which is going to be great, I think, Can't in a wait. future update. Um, and I like, I think with all this stuff, it's kind of nice, you know, stuff to add to the game. Nothing yeah. sort of game changing, really. No. I think it's you know, all, like like these are all very small tweaks. I don't know yeah. if they go for the big stuff. I well, I, you know, I think I'm I'm grateful that these uh, updates have been of added course. because I I honestly thought that the post launch support would be limited from Respawn, having seen how Insomniac handled Stormland in the past. So mm. I'm surprised and pleasantly yeah. surprised and very grateful that we have got these updates. They uh, address actually the most critical issues that we've had yeah. with the game with this update. I think if there was one big thing that I would wish for is just add. A progression system even if it's a basic one add a basic progression system to the multiplayer because that is what's going to keep yeah. players coming back for more even if it's point, just like a, a like, point system where it's like oh you made this many headshots system. and uh yeah you, you get this or that and yeah okay. it's just in, in in every in every shooter multiplayer right when you, and you know yeah you, some stats at the it's end something, yeah, it's issue. something i have to agree yeah. with mike on this one i mean my my ask would be try to optimize uh, the size of the game because I think if you can get on with the price the size, yeah. right the, the price is still a bit high um, I love it I still think that for a triple a game that's got multiplayer and, and single player I'm like I'm just barely okay with the price that full price at the moment for 60 like I, yeah. I get it I get why they're charging that price now I'd like to see them you know put, pull some sales in Q1 uh, but the change for me would be it would be split between like just optimization like make the game run better for generally more consistently for more players and if they can do more work on on the way the game 
patches on how much storage space is there that's occupied if they can. Nathan came up with a great, a brilliant, I think, uh, idea to separate the multiplayer and single player game components. I mm -hmm. honestly think that if they take a very hard look at that, they could actually end up with people starting on multiplayer, really enjoying it, and that, you know, say release multiplayer for 20, 20 bucks, and then yep. go on to the single player for 40. And I think then yeah. it partly yeah. justifies the higher cost. It gives people a ladder mm -hmm. to step through. If if it's even possible, I don't know how viable that is. In a I also game. wonder. I also wonder how much of that prize is actually the gallery contents, since I actually care very less about that section of the game. Yeah. Uh, while I do know that the production of that is really high value, and there must be some associated cost with that. But and I wonder if that would have been removed from the game. Like yeah. how much, how much less size would it be in the first place? Because I think that the game would be a lot smaller uh, if you removed that uh, that high quality 4K content from it. And second of all, could it push the price down? Yeah. I think they, they I think they can associate it directly with the game. I think they can definitely shave off some gigabytes because uh, it's it's definitely not optimized. But that, as I said, is the big stuff that is going to take some work, it some money. Work. I don't know yeah. if that money is still there uh, to be optimizing the game to that level. Um, and the thing is, it's going to drop in price anyways because I don't think it's sold that well. I don't think it's sold that so well. So for for it those for those who so for those who didn't catch the news around release day. The game originally required 340 gigabytes of free space to be That's able right. to get the game installed. Yeah. Wow. To, to install the game today is something shy of 180 gigabytes. So they That's actually right. managed to address that within the first week, which is great. This is what Mike's talking about. They're patching it like crazy for these quality of life improvements. You guys know I'm already smitten about the game, but I love that they're doing this. Mm -hmm. I think it's absolutely the reason I think it's so applaudable. You said use the word commendable, and I thought it was great. These guys deserve a medal, maybe even a medal of honor. Uh, for their oh, God, service. That was so cheesy. Corny. <laughs> corny. Oh, very corny. Corny. Uh, what, I, what I want to know is, like, um, you know, have you have uh, you finished the game, Zim, and is there any update uh, on your thoughts on it so far? No, not yet. So I haven't okay. I haven't really touched it again since uh, since I played it last week. So I've got no change in my basis. I, that last week I said it was game of the year for me. It's still sitting on that on that roster, but. Um, I have in the past, it's rare that I put, change my opinion, but I'll just remind mm -hmm. that with the other gargantuan game that I've played, which was Asgard's Wrath, after eight hours of that game, where it really plateaued and I was like, oh, there's no more yeah, game mechanics. Right. It's just like, yeah, this right. is dead to me now. Yeah, uh, yeah, I changed yeah, my yeah. recommendation from a buy to a consider be because it's very pretty, great for the first couple of hours, and then it just kind of gets to become this grind that I didn't want to yeah. do and I didn't end up finishing mm -hmm. it as a result so if that happens with Medal of Honor yeah. it'll be sad um, but there's still the multiplayer so I'm not expecting that to happen we'll see but we'll see. You'll, you'll probably be in a position to give your final update when we do our sort of recap of 2020 and give our game of the years and that kind of stuff in a couple of weeks time unless, right? I, unless I get run over by a tank Mike that game's getting done in the next two weeks because <laughs> cool. I'm off work okay. now man I've got free reign to my VR games again <laughs> okay well i look forward to that mm. but yeah good to see that respawn are supporting medal of honor and hopefully we get some more support um coming over the next sort of weeks and months and uh yeah. you know yeah fingers yeah. crossed Super. um so now let's talk about mist because this is something that we cut out of last week's show yes. because we were getting on a little bit um zim i think you're the only one out of the four of us that have actually played this game um so i think this one sort of rests on your shoulders here but okay. uh, i'm a big fan of puzzle games so i'm super intrigued to think to, to see what you think of the game uh especially you know after our little battle with a uh, shadow point and which one's <laughs> going to finish that first um but um, so i'm looking forward to maybe getting into a little a battle with this one as well but Tell us what you think of the game so far, and like how far roughly do you think you're into it, and and do you think it's worth the yeah the, you know a buy right well, now? Well, let me let me first cover a little bit of history because Mist is one of those games that is you need a history lesson for it because once upon a time it was the world's biggest selling game, which a lot of mm -hmm. people I think don't realize. So um, Mist was made by Rand and Robin Miller. Uh, they formed a company called Cyan or a studio called Cyan. Uh, Mist was published in 1993. So looking at that. Just to, all the way to December 10th, uh, 2020, when they landed Myst uh, recreated for VR. And, and this is a quest title for those who are wondering. Um, so as, as a player in Myst, what you do is you're trapped on this island. You could think of it as a kind of island equivalent room escape. It's definitely a heavy set puzzle game. Um, and you basically zip between various ages. So you start off with this kind of magical book and you put your hand on it and you get teleported to this island. 
And then on this island, you're undoing various uh, mechanical bits, various puzzles, some of them logic-based, some of them just kind of physical geometry of the level. Um, but I would say that Cyan are well known for their diabolically difficult puzzles. Things that are really, if you're a puzzler, you're like, this is my 10,000 piece puzzle. Um, the, the VR games that I've played of theirs are Abduction, which is a quite a long, um, I'll say flat experience that was VRified. Um, it's got some kind of weird looks to it, but it's an absolutely gorgeous it's a, game. It's a solid port. It's a uh, solid port, oh, it right? is a solid port. You, if you feel the datedness of it, as in... Yeah, of course, now, but like when, when it got pirated on... What was CV1 or uh, DK2? At uh, least CV1. Yeah, I don't know if it was as old uh, as DK2. It could be DK2, actually. Um, yeah. But I, when I played it, like you'd have, you know, you, you interact with things with like a floating mouse cursor, kind of a floating yeah, dot, yeah, right? Yeah. And and then you'd click it and it would do a thing and it was just binary interactions. Um, yeah. But the but the levels were incredible, like they very, very high detail. The puzzles were incredible. Uh, yeah. When the world would transform, it was, was beautiful. And actually it brings a lot of that to Quest um, in Myst. Um, and there's a bunch of games that came out between then and now that uh, that I just wanted to call it the names of, so you know its pedigree and kind of where it came from. So there was Mist in 93, Riven in 97, Mist 3 Exile, obviously they decided to put the Mist name back in because for sales purposes, in, 2000, in 2001. <laughs> uh, Uru, Ages Beyond Mist in 2003. Uru, hmm. Uru. 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 Mist 4, Revelation in 04, Mist 5, End of Ages in 05. I don't know why. Three, four, and five. Man, they just like, right after the millennium, they're yeah. like, oh, world's world's going to shit. We got to quickly get these games out. And then inevitably they did a, an online experience, and I have no idea what that was like. What, online experience? What, like, like you're on an island to escape together? Puzzling. <laughs> All puzzling. Everyone puzzling. Very, very confusing. So then you end up you end up with uh, this catalog of kind of five or six games that they've got, and then they decide we're going to VRFI our original, original experience for people who haven't done it. And this is nearly 28 years later. So this is missed. Um, I think that's probably Easy. it. The only other thing I wanted to say is, I'm going to ask you a question, a little bit of trivia. What dethroned missed? So they sold 6 million copies worldwide. And then in 2002, a little game dethroned it. What game was that? 2002. 2002. Carmageddon. Carmageddon. <laughs> Sim, Sim City. What? Sorry, Mike, what did you say? Worms. Wasn't Worms. Uh, Nathy, what did you say? I, I said Sim City. I don't know. You are the closest to the bunch. Oh, I am? Yeah. <laughs> Sims. Theme it's the Sims. The oh, Sims. The Sims. With its okay. gazillion expansions wow. came out and became the best selling the game Sims. globally. The first oh. The Sims. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so that's a little bit of trivia. Now let's get into the actual game and kind of my thoughts on it. So the I gave games. a little bit of a snap last week about this, but um, in short, you're, you're plunked on this island. You have to solve puzzles. I found it to be the first thing I noticed was it, it's it's I wouldn't say it has the, the graphical fidelity of its PC counterparts. Um, having played Abduction, having played an alpha of Firmament, which is the next game on PC are working on, which is a very ambitious project. Um, this is definitely a strip down. It's what you can expect running on Quest. Um, still looks decent, but the world is largely static. And I was wondering if, because it was ported from such an early PC game, if it would show. Um, and it, I would say it does. It, the the, the, the fre you know, fresh coat of paint isn't enough to co totally cover up the fact that this is a, a game from <laughs> nearly 30 years ago. But they do a pretty decent job. And I would say people who are new to it will probably just think, oh, this is made from like an indie studio. Um, the puzzles are good. Some of them are are, are absolutely maddening, and you, and you will be kicking yourself over it. Stuff like, oh, I didn't think to look up in a particular section, or um, I didn't think to turn this lever back the other way. Um, mm. Those kinds of things that happen. But the yeah. fact that the the physical environment around you is modified and updated when you solve a puzzle feels great. And I know there's a lot of people who would have done this, and for our uh, more aged listeners uh, who went through the original Mist and were old enough at the time to actually beat the game. I suppose my only concern is the core gameplay is about the same, but they do have a feature that allows you to randomize the puzzles. And that means that there is some uh, nature of 
let's say, uncertainty in what you're going to need to unlock next. And that's mm -hmm. also good if you're going to broadcast the game or play it with an audience because then they don't know for sure what the puzzle is that you're going to have to solve next. And it's not just like a lead me by the nose to the experience. Mm -hmm. um, all in all, I think it's a game to consider. I think it's, uh, it's if you're a puzzler, I think you'll enjoy it. Um, I thought that a lot of the visuals in the game, you'll notice on the Maid Island, just as you walk up, there's these like beautiful grills, uh, feels very like, um, feels very like, like, uh, um, Fallout VR in certain places, like glowing mm. with an amber hue, almost like, um, I don't know how we call it, but radioactive, not radioactive. Um, it, it, it was, it was, it was this popular thing in burger joints for a while. Those like old tubes, the like orange or amber colored tubes, that lighting like neon. Not not as bright as neon. It's like uh, anyway, lighting. That's that's wow. that's nice. Wow. But so how is I'm the mist? Is, how is the mist in VR? This is the thing. Like there isn't a lot. <laughs> there isn't There's a lot, lot of mist. fog in the levels that I've played. I've played two or three so far. Like you, I know from the trailer you get into like a forest level. I think you go into the future at some stage. I don't know what's oh, you go what's to the to come. future. But um, but it doesn't have anything to do with mist, right? It's, it, that that's just <laughs> that's just a joke that we're doing, right? Because isn't yeah, the I don't know. has that doesn't it have like a particular name or something? That's because it's spelled M Y S T, right? M Y S T. I I don't know where the name Mist originates. I didn't see that I mean, in I, any of the I myself, I'm, I haven't played it back in the day, just because I I'm not really a puzzler. I think I don't think I have the patience for this. I think there are three puzzle games that I ever played and really enjoyed. That was The Longest Journey, Ooh, uh, Gray nice. Matter. And uh, Escape from Monkey Island. Ah, uh, Escape from great. Monkey Island. Yes, yeah, it's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah, baby. I think those are the ones, the only ones uh, that I enjoy. And those are really low skill uh, puzzles. Low skill. <laughs> like you don't need to think that hard in order to solve the puzzles. Monkey I'm Island. I'm so glad you exactly said Monkey whatever. Island. I want Monkey Island in VR. They did a, a pretty awful 3D version on Steam some years ago. It was not up to par with should, the previous they games. They should make more eye toy games. Yeah. So. But, that's it, in a, to, that's it in a nutshell, I'd say, Mike. I mean, so you how, didn't get a chance you... this week to play it at all, yeah? No, okay. no. With everything happening, Medal of Honor and Jurassic World, <laughs> I haven't played it at all, but I am looking forward to it. I have it installed on the Quest ready to go, so I'm looking forward to checking that over the next uh, couple of weeks. How far do you think you're into it so, so far? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the thing is, I played Abduction, man, and I thought I was like, I got to be done with Abduction. And it's the kind of game where you have to look up, you know, guides to even get past certain bits. And mm -hmm. I was like, shit, I have like at least 25 hours left. So I have no idea. I'd imagine, wow. like if I was guessing, I'd say I'm a quarter into the game and I've played it, what, two hours? So yeah. I think it's probably think... got six to eight hours in it. And this is a guess. This is a guess. And you think it's more challenging than uh, like the room VR in terms of puzzle design? The... I would say it's a little bit more antiquated in terms of its puzzle design than the room. The room feels like a design for VR experience. This feels like this this feels like an an indie project that I would like. I'll just call it that. So it's not like okay. bare bones of like oh they just slapped VR on top of an old game. It does feel like a you it's worth the money uh to 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 play for it. But like uh like Mike alluded to at the start and our little shadow shadow point race which he won by at least a few months. I'm hoping that won't turn into a few years. You months. Uh, there is a there is a puzzle called the Pendulum in Shadow Point, uh, which is an amazing game. Um, and and I'm still stuck on that one puzzle. I've beaten <laughs> everything else, and I can't beat the game. So maybe over the holidays, I'll have to try and chew that one on again because I have taken it on four times, and it's beaten me every time. Um, so just like uh, apparently the name Mist, yeah. uh, according to Onikaze in the chat, comes from the Jules Verne novel. The mysterious island. Ah, mysterious island. Oh, oh, okay. And that's okay. why it's M Y S T as opposed to M I S T. Yes. I guess hmm. so. Good to know. But yeah, I think if you're a puzzler, you'll like it. Go for it. If you're not, if you're a Quest One owner, be careful, because on Quest Two, the performance. And this is my main bugbear with the game is, in certain places, it chugs, um, and I don't see that a lot on the Oculus Home Store apps that oh. chug. Uh, so I'm a little bit surprised that it was permitted to launch in that state because normally Oculus mm. QA are pretty pretty severe, just like PlayStation. Yeah. So it is what it is. It didn't really detract from the game, but just be aware. Like like VR Chat or Rec Room when those first launched, and they had rooms where you it would literally like 
you know, hammer, yeah, you'd yeah. hammer through it, it would chug a fair bit. Yeah, but it's rare for a single player to have to for that to happen. Usually, Very rare. As you said it's multiplayer that uh yeah. so you think Mist has enough leverage for people who are not familiar with Mist or let's say like old like puzzle games in general that mm. they would be buying this? I, I I think there's probably not enough puzzlers for people to chew through. If you bought a quest and you've gone through yeah. you know, gadgeteer yeah, in the room and Red and Matter I expect and, you to die and all that kind yeah. of stuff. You'd yeah. happily settle and play this one yeah, over a weekend. Many, you know, you're right. Yeah, it's been I, a while ago. Like a new one came out, and also hardcore, where you really get to only do puzzling. Yeah, that's rare. And and the other thing is, like, for people of my generation, and I'm 35, I used to ogle on this box on the shelf. It was like the mysterious game that I always wanted. Mm. I remember looking at the ribbon box and being like, "Ah, oh, damn! Look at those graphics." So if you're from that era and you didn't get a chance to play it, uh, play this. Yeah. I think if you already played Mist, I I do wonder. If if this is so, if anyone in chat has played the original Mist and the VR one, I'd love to hear your feedback in chat to say, yeah, you know, do it again. There's enough variation because mm -hmm. if it's just the same puzzles again and you can just breeze through it, then you might walk away disappointed. But Cyan are definitely a studio to keep an eye on. I'm yeah. still got my eye on Firmament. Hopefully that will land for us next year. Oh, um, Firmament. Oh but my god. Yeah. If you're going into this, I'm telling you, be warned. You got to be a puzzler because these yeah, are hard years. games. I, I know I'm not because I, every time I play a game like that and I can't solve the puzzle in the next five minutes, I'm like convinced that the game is bugged. That's it's <laughs> it's not me. It's the it's definitely the game because this should work. <laughs> <laughs> Never this is. comes from the scientist as well. Yeah, exactly. Rowdy is like Jimmy Neutron. There's like an acorn in his head. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I've got I've got two points that I want to make about Mist. Uh, so the first thing I heard is that it's 10 gigabytes, which is huge for a quest game. Uh, I think uh, it's only topped by what the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, which is 12 gigabytes. Yeah, for the moment. Um, so for quite a big game. Uh, I also heard, and I don't know if this is true or not, but there's an update coming where you can make notes. Yes, um, which yes. will make the game easier and less of a slog. It's, so the note making is if you if you have to if you have if if you if you don't have the mental acuity of a puzzler, then you or need you've to got have like a memory like a fish, like I have. Yeah, no, like if you've got a memory like a fish, like I didn't find it so far. So as I said, I'm two two hours in. I could see why they're saying you might want to write stuff down. Right, <laughs> but I didn't need to. But if they say that, that that's enough. That's like that's that's a sign, man. Like it's yeah. That's where I'm. Where that's where I can't play this game. If they yeah, say you need a I paper, <laughs> like I, I I can't remember like three things at the same time. So I'm I'm out. I'm out. I'm, out. I'm nothing out here. <laughs> You do it in my uh, spare time. I love it. Yeah, it's like, but like those kinds of games. It's weird. It's like this challenge bar has ascended from the heavens, or descended from the heavens, and it's beckoning <laughs> to me. Like a siren on the rocks, it's like, come on, Zim, you know you want to try and, and complete this. I never beat Abduction for the same reason. It's just too difficult. And the thing is, there's a there's a piece of the gamer in me that takes a kick to the balls every time I got to go look up a guide website, right? And, and that's the same thing here, I'm sure. So, so I, I want to know where you get stuck, Mike, when you play it, because yeah. back in L, there's a part that I got stuck on, and if Mike, chat didn't help me out, there's no way I was going to... Mike, uh, Mike gets hours. stuck in the starting screen where he has to do the settings. Uh, Wait a Mike minute, I, I completed piss. Shadow Point and yeah, I completed exactly. the room VR. Oh, okay, next, okay. next podcast, Mike is going to come on. Oh yeah, I finished it in two hours. Smashed it. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Goodman in the chat says, uh, I suggest keeping a pad nearby. There are a few places where the notes really help and he's finished it. So. Oh, oh, if Jeffrey finished it, I don't know. Well, that's cheating. <laughs> no, 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 don't worry. On, like, Jeff knows what's up. Yeah, well, we know yeah. tall guys are just smarter, so that's not fair. Yeah. But, yeah, <laughs> well, I'm tiny. Oh, okay, well. Well, that is missed. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing that over the next couple of weeks, and obviously we'll update you with uh, my thoughts yep. on that. But uh, very promising so far. Uh, it sounds like a, you know, it's a classic adventure game, you know, classic. adventure puzzle. So if, if you're sort of of that era, then you'll get some nostalgia out of it as well, which is also very nice. Um, so now let's talk about Jurassic World Aftermath. Um, I think three of us have played it this week. Zim hasn't. Am I right? I can say I played it for two minutes, but not more than that. So <laughs> I don't count. Okay. So okay, we'll, first we'll, let's first do the two minute review from Zim. <laughs> how, was, how were the first two minutes? Oh man, there was an object that I could pick up. There was a radio going with some beautiful sounds, and then something happened to the plane, and that's when I noped out. 
Okay. Okay, fair enough. Wow. We'll, tr we'll try and avoid uh, spoilers. So, you know, if you want to go and enjoy the game, then, y you know, you're welcome to. But we will be talking about game length. Um, okay. So if that's a spoiler for you, bear that in mind. Yeah. Um, but let's just get into the basics because um, it released, obviously, this week as an Oculus Quest exclusive. So it's not available on Rift, which is a bit unusual. We've seen this in the past with some games, like Lies Beneath, for example. Uh, yeah, was, true. Was, that, was that exclusive to Quest as well, I think? It didn't come to Rift. Am I right on the, with that one? Um, but there's been some examples anyway, but this is going to be purely on Quest. There's no plans to release it on Rift, which is a bit yeah, But strange. you hear less and less people complain because there are less and less people. I, well, uh, the, the hardcore Rift community, I see them complain because they want more content to play. Uh, yeah. And it is a, it is an interesting looking game, you know, definitely yeah. the art style. Yeah. Um, but the the price wise, it's uh, $24.99 in US dollars, $18.99 in British pounds. Um, you know, we've been craving as a podcast, you know, a, a dinosaur game for such a long time. So we oh, finally got one, which is great. What was and the other one again, Rowdy? The the one where you were educated, like getting an educational lesson on dinosaurs. You, I think it, you, you highlighted it. The general Jurassic World experience? No, it was like, like a dinosaur one? game that, that came out this year where you, you got like educational stuff. You could fly with dinosaurs and you could be a dinosaur. And I don't know, it was like pretty immersive. Am I the only one who still remembers this? Okay. Yeah. This, educational this dinosaur experience. What was yeah, that? Yeah. I don't know. It was like a super indie thing. We were just laughing about it. Nothing serious. You, but, you don't uh, mean? Oh, no, you you said came out this year. You don't mean that that one that came out entirely the beginning with the time machine on the water, right? Uh, no, that's machine. ancient. Yeah. Great story, Nathie. Thanks for that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sorry, that sorry. I ruined, I ruined the whole uh, start of this. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Uh, but we finally got a dinosaur game. We were all looking forward to a dinosaur game in VR, and we finally got one. And it's Jurassic Park, or well, Jurassic World at least. Um, developed yeah. by UK studio Coatsync um, and funded by Oculus. They're a great studio. Um, so it's great to see them behind it. Um, some things, let's talk about the art style, because I think that's one standout thing about this game. I think, you know, from a visual standpoint, I think they did a great job with it. It's kind yeah. of got this kind of cell shaded, cartoony, Borderlands style aesthetic to it, which I think works really well in vr some people weren't a big fan of it they'd prefer a sort of more realistic vibe but i think bearing in mind this is exclusive to quest i think it's a great art style and they sort of Smart. use it to their advantage you know for yeah. performance reasons as well yeah. um so i think but it's it, it, uh something what i heard is that people said like because of this art style this game is less uh, scary uh I, I i totally disagree uh, yeah but same. Uh, it, it's very detailed um in it, like you would say with an art style like that everything is simplistic it's not it's very detailed. The game is very detailed. Like every environment is very rich. And I'm I'm sitting uh, a little bit on the opposite end of that. I think it's going to be again one of those episodes. I guess. Uh oh, <laughs> sure. Go for I, it. I think I think the art style is cool. You know, like um, it, it feels like I'm playing in a comic book. Uh, it reminds me very much of that 13 uh, style. If you, if you remember that comic book or that video game when it came out. Um, but I, there was a part of me while playing the game that was like, oh, I kind of wish that this was, you know more realistic or like looked better because mm. i indeed found the dinosaurs not that convincing uh w with the art style that they were using uh, i don't know if that was because it was cell shaded or just the way that they were you know constructed so I, I didn't find like the level of detail that i kind of wanted uh, in the dinosaurs mm. um but like i said i've played for roughly i'd say a maximum of two hours that i've played it uh, so i haven't i haven't gone through the the entire thing yet um but yeah, that, that was my, my first impression with the visual art style. Also, I when I heard the Jurassic Park or Jurassic World experience, I was expecting a bit more uh, a luscious environment, you know, greens and parks and, uh, you know, in, like a Jurassic World. Mm -hmm. um, but but it's all set in, in, in you know, this, this, this center, right? A uh, facility, I don't know if yeah. You, if you played the entire game in that facility, I haven't, like I said, I haven't played this game, but I, I did feel the environment a little bit lacking like i was just rushing through the hallways and i didn't really stop on a lot of places to expect it because it didn't really pull me in in a certain way um again that might be the art style or that might be just the way that they they constructed it uh, i liked the beginning intro the stuff that that zim played i liked that a lot i was like oh man this is gonna be so good but then it, it kind of turned a bit dark for me like it was just dark not a lot of color very bland uh, no, i agree it's it's a very dark game like it starts out very colorful but mm -hmm. that doesn't seem to come back that much later on uh, yeah and, and, and i kind of regretted that because i i was kind of like i've said it like 
already so many times on this endless podcast what i really want is do like something like the monorail like they have in jurassic world or jurassic mm -hmm. park where you sit in a car you drive through the forest and you, you see these huge dinosaurs that's the kind of experience that i'm still looking for in a, in a in a dinosaur game and i didn't get that with this while i did feel like there was the potential to do that especially because it kind of hinted towards that with that intro where you had the plane, you know, you were flying towards the island. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to get like a little bit of a tour of this island before, mm -hmm. you know, stuff is going to go down. But that's mm -hmm. not really what happens. No, it's, it's, it's like it, for, as someone who's a, who's a big fan of the movies, uh, it, it's not like they, they give you everything that you desire in that sense. And if, yeah, if you refer to, uh, what was it again? Ark Survival, what was the name? Ark Park. Survival right? of Wolves. Ark Park. Park. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um but again th th that that's a total different story but yeah visually that's of course what you want to go for i think no, they could I have th pulled off a realistic uh, thing though because if you look at for example star wars tales from mm -hmm. the galaxy's edge it is possible to make something look realistic so they could well, have done that well, what uh, i what i still use as the example for like uh, a beautiful looking dinosaur game is uh, robinson the journey uh, i think yeah. that game on a on a but playstation is is absolutely but this is on gorgeous. quest yeah, of this course, is yeah, we've got to remember that, that. You know, I get that. But it's and not that, impossible. But... It's not impossible to make. But then the game would be smaller, and it would be less maybe gameplay to get. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna criticize. The... I'm not gonna criticize the art style because it's it's the design choice, and I do like that cell shaded thing. It is just something that like I I kind of wish that the dinosaurs were a bit more. I don't know, impressive. Maybe that's the word that I'm looking for. Yeah, I didn't find them as impressive because of because of the art style. Be. Yeah, because of the exactly. art style. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, because of the art style, yeah, no, but also of course, because, because of the way that they were designed. I, I do think that in cell shaded stuff, you can make amazing things. And I kind of felt that the dinosaurs could have been even cooler. Well, they become more cute with, with a cartoony art style. Well, mm -hmm. you want dinosaurs to be scary and dangerous. And that's, that's only like, possible when something is realistic. But like you said, it doesn't stop the game from being scary. because No, it it's is. not. No, no, it's not. No, um, it's not. So like art style aside, you know, it's got this kind of borderlands style cartoony vibe about it personally i really like it but seems like we've got a bit of a mixed opinion about that um let's talk about sound design because i think sound design is 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 very important as well because you know you you speak to uh sort of like someone that helps you via radio throughout the campaign and you know i think the this the voice acting is very good um there's also yeah. like you get the sound from the dinosaurs themselves which is positional audio so you know for example if you're hiding under a table from a velociraptor you can actually hear roughly where he's coming from and and sort of move around accordingly yeah, cool. and i think that that works really well to build up the tension in the game which is really great yeah um but like you said about the the environments i think the environments do have some level of detail to them even though it's kind of like a basic art style but there isn't much interaction there is like no there are elements which you have to interact with as part of the the, the sort of progression to get through certain sections, like That's through a door, for rare, example, yeah. or a computer terminal. But yeah. like you can't interact with items um, no. scattered around. And I think it's a bit of a shame because like this is in the Jurassic World universe. So like there's parts of the park that have got items scattered around Potential. without giving too much away that you'd probably want to like explore and look around and sort of pick up and inspect. But yeah. you can't do that. So it kind it's, of like... Uh, Everything is very static, right? Yeah. Uh, it's all like like a classic classic VR indie game where everything is glued onto the ground and it just you can't. I think pick we've it just up. been spoiled with like Half Life Alex and we kind of are expecting that kind of you know detail in every single game. It, it's uh, a minor gripe, I would say. It doesn't break the game in any way. It just you know, mm -hmm. it just like exploration is one of those things in VR that you know you tend to do more of because everything's so immersive so you tend to like look in every corner every nook and cranny pick everything up inspect everything and because you know from the get-go that you can't do that it means that you don't tend to explore as thoroughly as you possibly would in like a game that did have that mm -hmm. for example and that's mm -hmm. you know that would pad the game out a little bit more for those wanting to like plus you know, explore plus with interactivity that in that way you can also make it a part of the gameplay and you can use your environment in your favor and that's something yeah. that they missed out on that okay. could have been interesting let's say you crawl through this one room and there is i don't know like um, a detection port that usually scans if you have like things in your pockets like knives and stuff and it suddenly starts beeping and you're like oh i activated it like there's nothing really in the environment that constantly 
you know get triggered or, or you can use uh in, in, in that yeah or you could like throw like a, a mug from a table to distract exactly uh, That's what I was you know a raptor or something yeah exactly um but also so basically... random things you know what i mean like you you uh crawl somewhere and something falls off the table you're like oh i made a lot of noise now i need to yeah. run for my life that's those kind of things are not present in this game yeah but again you know like they've, they've streamlined the gameplay they've yeah, designed very... it a certain way so i get it it's just like a minor like oh that would have been nice but it's not a game breaking no, thing no. um in terms of the way the game plays itself like if you've ever played alien isolation it's very yeah. very, similar. very similar and it's almost like i can just see the coat sink uh pitch meeting they're all yeah, sitting around the table and they're like right let's make alien isolation yeah in in vr exactly. with a jurassic world skin with this kind of borderlands art style and they were like the they kind did. of four pillars of the g the game design they must and, have done that for sure they and must certainly have done that. If I was from Oculus and I'd been given that pitch, I'd have green it straight away as well, because it does make for a really fun uh, game. You know, like basically most of the game you're hunted by raptors um, and you have to hide from them. You you can't kill them. You don't have any weapons. So, you you, no. you know, you, you have to hide in lockers or you have to hide under tables. Although with Alien, the biggest difference is that you had Xenomorph, one Xenomorph, I think, not Xenomorphs. Uh, yeah. And you could also have, you also had fight sequences where you were fighting droids, where in this game it's velociraptors almost all the time. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And and that's the thing, you don't have any weapons, so you can't fight back. And, no. you know, I, I saw some people say that that's a shame. Personally, I think it's, the game is better for not having any weapons because it builds up the tension more. There's always a constant feeling of vulnerability because it's just you and well, the dinosaur. A it's mix a could have design. been nice. A mix could it's have been nice where sometimes yeah, you do but, have but a gun. Yeah, but I kind of get why they're... Like, and I'm, I'm in the same boat as, as Nathan that a mix would be nice, but I do completely understand the, the decision for not doing that uh, yeah. in terms yeah. of story-wise and in terms of uh, yeah. game design-wise. Mm. Yeah, uh, the only thing I, I, I really wanted, um, which they did really well in Alien Isolation, and if you've played Alien Isolation in VR, you'll definitely know this, is that they, they had some amazing death animations in that game. Oh, so like, yeah. if you're playing it in VR, and then all of a sudden the Xenomorph crawls up behind you, and then yeah. its claws come over your eyes, yeah. like yeah. that is super terrifying. Or you look at your uh, like belly, and you see his like, tail sticking Tails. through your... Yeah. Uh, and then pulling it out. Yeah. That, that which you're so bringing epic. up now is something that I find hugely disappointing in this game. Uh, yeah. The death animation is completely not present. Uh, there's nothing there. Uh, yeah. If you look at the trailer, even it doesn't look the same. Uh, the way that that you die in the trailer is that you die in the game. It's that not doesn't... entirely the same, which I find a little bit weird because I I was definitely expect because it was the first thing that I tried. What happens if I die? You know, the first time yeah. that I saw a dinosaur, I literally like ran up to him and tried grabbing his tail to see if I could interact with that, but that also didn't work. Uh, grabbing his tail yeah he <laughs> grabbed his right tail right on his back but, um, yeah um, and then no, but i um, just jumped <laughs> so so yeah no i agree with that but uh the thing is like i played a lot of strange indie games in the past where i got eaten by all kinds of dinosaurs it's very terrifying and it works very well you know the shocking effect is great but i i, I think it's a bit too much um and i yeah. and i th also think the the reason why they didn't do it in this game and also the reason why everything is kind of simplistic and arcadey in that sense in terms of gameplay and visuals and everything is because this game is on the back of the box of the oculus quest 2. this mm -hmm. uh is a launch title for the oculus quest 2. this game is targeted towards newcomers and this is an introduction to adventure this is an introduction to survival and also, uh, you know, horror a little bit lightly. Yeah, so it's, it's more so, for yeah. that audience and not for uh, us who have been, you know, uh, mm -hmm. using the quest for like a year or two now. This is definitely more for the, you know, the starters because the gameplay yeah. is very straightforward. As we said, like we want to have guns in there and we want all kinds of stuff in there, but that would, you know, overcomplicate things. Mm. And this game is just very simple. Uh, you understand how it works. Uh, from the go, you know, but uh, what I really liked as well was that they the way that they used like kind of I wouldn't say loading screens because it wasn't really a loading screen But uh, when they load in a new environment, they kind of put you in an elevator you press a button Yeah, and then you go uh, to a, another kind of level or another kind of floor The only thing I wish was that it wouldn't black out at that moment oh. You would just be like in the elevator and it would like, you know buzz or whatever you since it kind of drew yeah. me out every time when I go right. into a different level I pressed yeah. the button and I was expecting the elevator yeah, yeah, to close yeah. and go. Mm. Yeah, but that's that the problem would be with that is 
there are also doors where doors. it's like on the same level and then yeah. you also have to find some for that but i thought that the loading times were really really fast good like yeah really yeah. fast man really. uh i wasn't really waiting at all uh yeah so we should say like um content wise because i finished it um it's about three hours long oh three hours wow i played for two i thought i was very close to the end already but uh yeah but we should also mention that this is only half the game um yes. and this is the thing like what is I the think, price uh so uh the 25. price was 24.99 in us dollars 18.99 in british pounds um and the the second half of the game is coming in the form of paid dlc next year so and this is my major gripe like i really so, like uh, three so three hours is uh did you go through it really fast? Because some people that I heard found it pretty hard to finish. So they died a lot and they constantly got... Uh, I don't think you can really get stuck on the puzzles or it's very well, linear in that it, sense. Uh, yeah, and you've also got like this like uh, glove navigation thing that's yeah. always pointing you yeah, yeah, in the so right you direction where you need where to go. Yeah, so yeah. it's not like you get lost or anything. Some Sometimes it can get a bit frustrating because... Sometimes you rush and you you really need to play. Yeah, but it the safe game is not slow. the game is not difficult. That's what I'm I trying to say. say so, and that no. that kind of like and that that's that's one thing that I want to say before we get into you know that it's in parts is that I found overall that they make uh, they make it very easy for you to succeed in this game. One mistake they make is that when you die, uh, the game doesn't reset you. Uh, uh, in a way where you're like, I need to be more careful. So let's say you finish two puzzles, you die. You finish the two puzzles, you don't have to do them again. And that makes you a little bit lazier. Like, oh, I can just rush to the puzzle, fix it. And if I die, oh, doesn't matter because that loses kind of like you lose the... But like you the... say, like they, they've they've designed this or made this game for yeah, yeah, like... Yeah. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, I know. For a, um, a more newer audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Younger than eight, yeah. Um, and, <laughs> yeah, younger than me. Uh, and they overdose every environment with, with too many spots to hide in. So it, it's also very simple in, in the mm. sense of... But again, yeah, I'm not the target audience, so I'm complaining about something but, that I should not maybe complain about. But uh, yeah, but I, I certainly enjoyed this more than probably most of the recent Quest releases. Like, I enjoyed it more than Star Wars. And for me, like, I think it really did end up being a really enjoyable experience. And like yeah. I say, like, the only gripe I have is that the game is split up into two halves. So yeah. you have, like, the first half, which you get now. The other half is coming in 2021 as paid yeah. DLC, so you're going to have to but pay. Do we know to, how much that paid DLC to, will be? We don't know how much that's going to be. Because if it's the same price, $50. It's uh, not going to be the same price. I know that, but we don't know what the price is going to be. It's going to be so, paid anyway. So it's um, good to point out why this is happening. Uh, I yeah. think this, this, it's clear that this is a new business model they want to go for. We have seen this with uh, Star Wars, Tales from the Galaxy's Edge as well. They, they want to just... Yeah, they want to make more money by splitting things in different parts. I don't and that know way it's... they can also measure if popularity is going well, because that you could introduce even more parts later on, so you can add more to the game. I don't know if it's because of that. I think, I think we've seen with traditional game releases as well this year that developers are under like immense pressure right now. They're having to work under new conditions. Many of them are split up working remotely now, um, you know, it's very it's much harder in 2020 to make a game than it was maybe a year ago when they were all in the same studio together and i i do understand and appreciate those new conditions and that it's more challenging now but i, I don't think that's the case i think it's just the case of like the game was going to get delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed they they advertised this game around what like the facebook connect and it was going to be a big title um and they just have to break it up so i this would have probably been like uh you know uh what like a 30 35 dollar game if it releases a whole but they have to split it in two just to get it out there um yeah, like of course that 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 also plays in the background but um if you look at the way the game has been designed and the same for uh, galaxy's edge you can see that money can be made there by adding more content and splitting it in parts, you make your new user base getting used to this new model of oh, you buy this in pieces. But uh, I think it's a dangerous move because I think oh, a lot is of a people are really move. annoyed about it. Like certainly from my perspective, I think the biggest disappointment for me is that they don't clearly state this in any of their marketing. No, that's that's um, yeah. It isn't in yeah. the game's description when you buy it in the store that you're only getting no. half the game up front, and I think that is my biggest frustration is the lack of transparency around the fact that this is half the and content. that's why i'm saying like if they like they could have been more transparent but this is a way to kind of 
go yeah, around. I, uh... I think the problem is that once you once people are burnt by this business model too many times, they're like, do you know what? Screw this. I'm not buying an Oculus funded title mm. anymore. You know, if this is yeah. what they do with all their games, like they did with Star Wars, they did with this, then like if it's got like a funded by Oculus brand on it or you know, made in collaboration with Oculus Studios. I'm not. Buy I'm not going to fall yeah, for that trick it, again. Yeah, but but the, like the growing rate of how many new Quest users are coming in every week, I don't think that's a real concern to them. Yeah, well, maybe not. But I think I, I think know. you know certainly they should state yeah, clearly stupid. in the game's it's description just annoying. that it's half I, it's, the game. True, and it's annoying. It's same with like Vader Immortal, where we had all these pirates. It's like just give us the but full thing. The, the thing with Vader is. It. That they said like it was episode one, so you knew that there was more episodes, subsequent episodes yeah, yeah, yeah. to come. They don't say this is but Jurassic the, World the, episode the, one. Yeah, and, and that's that's a problem. problem. But also the yeah. the the difference in quality and playtime because it could be that part two is the exact same price, but it's just not as good as the first part, or it's actually better than the first part. Could mm. also be. Um, but it's like, how do you balance that? How do you keep the playtime and the content balanced? With part one, part two, whatever is coming, yeah, um, yeah it kind of kills the, it kind of kills the immersion too because you play at a certain point, you want to finish it in one run, you want to buy the game, yeah, finish it, and not be like, oh, and now I need to wait to twenty twenty one. Do I still care about this game in twenty twenty one? And I, I think you that's my I mean? point. Like, I, obviously, we're fortunate, you know, we get the game early and we get to play it for free as well, which we're super grateful that's for. Always nice. But, yeah. but having, but if I was a paying customer or if I was advising a friend of mine, I would say just wait for the whole thing to be finished. Yeah, because you wait don't know how if the rest is gonna be any good or not. Yeah. Like you, you can't base, like you can't do a review right now based on this one part and not know what's what's still coming. Is there yeah. still something decent coming? No one yeah. freaking knows. I, I'm sure. I'm sure the second half will be good. You know, I really enjoyed the first half, and I, I do want more. It just sucks that I have to wait and that they didn't release it and just wait it and no. release it as a full package, as a full game. I think I think the the reviews and the perception as well from the VR community would have been better if they just waited and released it as a full package in like yeah. Easter yeah. or whatever. You know, like no, there's been so many game releases as well just recently that they could have pushed this yeah, one out and a again, little bit further. And again, and this is a classic mistake that Oculus makes all the time. They have a lot of awesome titles lined up and they're waiting for them to, but then they just throw them out, you know? Medal of Honor, mm -hmm. here, here, Medal of Honor, go, uh, play. And then and then it's like Jurassic World after, oh, here, play, 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 oh, surprise launch. And now half of the people don't even know this game came out. Zero marketing, once again. Mm -hmm. Again, with this one, as you said, maybe, maybe they weren't completely ready yet, but it's like you throw away money all the time with this and also leverage because this, yeah. this is a title that's on the back of your freaking box. Yeah. And it's Jurassic World Aftermath. You know how much a license costs to make a game like this? Use it in your favor. Use it as marketing. Hire me, okay? Just hire me. I'll make it happen for you next year. No, but seriously, He's retired you get, as you a get YouTuber, so you can hire yeah, him. Was... But, like, uh... but that's the thing. Like, I think overall it just is a shame because I think, you know, like I said, the game is good. I did really enjoy it, but, but do it you, just doesn't do have you, the full so, experience so... there. So do you want them to also make more games for different audiences where it's like we have the new because this is this is clearly a game for the newcomers. It's still enjoyable as someone who has been playing games for two years now on Quest. Mm -hmm. But I also want to see some more, you know, where it's like, okay, like Mist, the, the, for example, is clearly not for necessarily the newcomer. It's made for a more, you know, it's, kind like the games player. are fun, but they're feeling like party titles to me. I think, you know? I think the problem is that we've been in VR for such a long time. And then, like, when you get a game like Half-Life Alex come out or or something similar like The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, your bar of expectations rises. And then when other games, like, in my opinion, Medal of Honor, doesn't hit that bar, that you're, you're instantly disappointed. And I think that's the problem. Like, we've got to remember that, that VR is still very new. Um, it's an emerging industry. Everyone's still finding their feet in this space. Although we've been in it for a long time, the majority of the public haven't. Uh, yeah, so true. it's just it's our true. expectations no, against like it's, it's of Honor someone new. That bar. Do you think the Jurassic World does hit that bar? Because it's also no, a different platform. Of course. I'm just, but but we're talking about expectations like interactivity and level design and, and all those kind of things. And this is the thing: we've been spoiled in some experiences that we've had mm -hmm. that. And when an experience doesn't have it, then it feels like something's being taken away or something's missing. Yeah, well, from the because I definitely think that whereas, this game does not have that. And whereas most people, I don't think care. Design. I think it's because we're seeing this from a unique perspective. Well, it's like like if you just compare our uh, opinion every time with every game that came out uh, yeah. on Quest, anything like the reviews usually are more positive, anyways. Uh, right now, with this game on, like Quest audience loves this. Everything that comes out, they love it. Everything mm -hmm. is amazing all the time, almost all of the time. 
it's rare that it doesn't that they don't like what they're playing um so yeah of course um just what i'm just trying to say is that you have games for different audiences and this is the way and the way i try for, to evaluate a game uh, it's just like if it can draw me back in and if i feel entertained if i'm doing it and does this game do that to a certain extent yes um but i wasn't for the few hours that i played i wasn't like really like waiting for more you know so i think it's a decent title i think it's you know mm. a fun little break but i don't I wouldn't say that this is a full recommendation from my end, just in general. I think I think its only downside is that it's coming in parts, and that's 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 just a, a, a game breaker in a way for some people. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's certainly my uh, stance on it. You know, yeah. I think the game's good. Yeah, I, good I game. enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun screaming, fun. hiding from Velociraptor, yeah. hiding from my face. Off. Yeah, it is scary. Yeah. I, I don't know if you spoke package. enough about this, but it's it's definitely a terrifying game. You know, like yeah. it might look like a Roblox uh, Velociraptor, but uh, it's it's scary AF, man. The the sounds <laughs> in this game are freaking insane. I yeah. uh, I need to pipe in just for a second. First off, you're all flatly wrong. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, Chat has for wrong. some reason gone into conspiracy theory. Okay. Chat, in case you're wondering, I'm a spoiler sensitive fella, and I have dialed down the audio, so I haven't heard a goddamn thing these guys have said. I did a little bit of lip, lip reading by accident. Uh, but no, I don't have anything to say on the game yet. I haven't played it, so I'm just trying to save it for myself. I'm glad you guys find yeah. it terrifying and fun, though. I d definitely picked yeah. up those yeah. two bits. Yeah. So that's pretty much our summary on Jurassic World. Fun, but half the so content available right now. is this the last game that came out for this year, or is there still something coming? Uh, as far as I know, for Quest, this is the last one that's This coming. was the major one. So the yeah. Climb 2 is not suddenly launching next week out of nowhere as well, because they launch out of nowhere. And, and, I, and I can tell you, like we, like you would think that we also know what's coming out for. No, we don't know anything. It's like coming out of nowhere, and we also kind of need to adapt, <laughs> just we like you guys. Breathe. Yeah. I was gonna say one, Crazy. one, one comment. I know. You, I think you guys were talking about the episodic thing. It feels wrong that consumers don't know on the face of it that there's an expansion. That's what that, makes that, it. Yeah. yeah uh, that there's not a more apparent. Uh, flag for that. Disclaimer. For that type, yeah. Yeah, there needs to be an overt disclaimer if a game's going to be cut in half. And I think it's yeah. the same problem that we've had with microtransactions um, feeding off of, of developers' time when they could have been making an expansion for the game or doing something more material for the existing mm -hmm. base. I, I think it's a very different thing. We, we, we started off in PC, take it back to the original Half-Life, for example. Main game drops was popular. They decided to make a, not a sequel, but an expansion pack. Um, and then they made another expansion pack. Mm -hmm. And those expansion packs were developed after the initial game had been fully developed, launched, you know, and they didn't have this problem of, oh, here's all the content, we'll cut it in half and feed it to them. And I feel like that feels, to some extent, as underhanded. And that's the problem I have with that, with that strategy. It um, is underhanded. And, because and, they, yeah, you, it, this wouldn't fly in any other gaming medium. Like think other about than it this VR. way, right? So like you're going we, to you're going see... to a sandwich counter, yeah, and, and you're like, I'll have I'll have the rye on toast, and it comes to you on the plate. It's half a sandwich. I'm like, oh, it's fifty p for another half. It's like I thought I was getting a full sandwich. Yeah, why see, why are you yeah. giving me fucking half a sandwich? I ordered yeah. a sandwich. You know, yeah. you got to tell me if you're going to give me give me half. So that's uh, it, the it, point. It, just, it, it will just take a few more of these these tricks. And then people are like, listen, I'm not doing it anymore. Yeah. So it, it, might, just stop it, might it might it might still work stop with this more. Ah, oh, yeah, no, it was fun gameplay, so I'll just that's, keep that's it. That's what I mean. You um, just get burnt too many times and you're just like, I'm not doing it. It, it also I kills the that. kills the whole vibe of a game. It just mm. kills it. It does. But also, like we should we should also point out, because this is an Oculus funded title, this might be out of the control of Coat Sync and they might have just been told you need to release this now, and they yeah, didn't have yeah. much say but, in the matter. So. And there, there is such, I, I think this is a credit. really important part that uh, developers and their publishers should always consider how you release a game has an enormous effect on how it's taken, like mm -hmm. the, the perception of the game, irrespective of the content. Though I want to say one thing on, on behalf of, I think it was D1360 in chat had mentioned, wouldn't it be great if we got Turok in VR? And all I can yeah. say is Turok is a you know, badass game, right? If you don't yeah. know it, it's become quite old now. Um, awesome, and the yeah. thing, like Turok Two Seeds of Evil had this evil gun, the worst, most gruesome weapon I've ever seen in a game. I'd love to see it in VR. It was called the Cerebral Boar. 
And what it would do is you'd fire it. There was a like a seeking missile, and it would go and find the head of the dinosaur, like a raptor or something, oh. and it would penetrate and burrow through all the gray matter until it hit the brain, or burrow through all the bone until it hit the brain, and then it yeah. would explode, decapitating. It's like sli- it sniper leads or dinosaur edition, basically. It was great. It was it was I also, super. I awesome. also remember. I don't know the name of this. This is very old, but I remember playing a game where uh, you uh, landed on this island with dinosaurs, you had to hunt them down and you could save them in a museum later on. So this ship would like pick them up with a magnet. It would take them to some kind of spot and then you could uh, look at them at a museum. And you could also unlock guns with that, like a hunting game in a way. Uh, Very, uh, yeah, very interesting. Wasn't there um, Dino 365 or something that you had played a while back? And that was, (laughs) that's obviously a VR. Dino 365? That was the one where you could like put a Vive tracker on your foot and kick a dinosaur in the face. Oh, that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I do think like Rowdy was talking about Robinson the Journey. I do think it's, it it is possible to bring that to Quest too. I I want, yeah, Robinson uh, should come. Robinson should come. It's a good game. And I, I think know, a lot Crytek of people would enjoy it. in doing it's that, but it game. came to PC as well, I should yeah. say. Uh, it was a PlayStation VR exclusive. Then it came to PC. Island 365, uh, not Dino 365. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Island 365. Yeah. yeah. Almost got it. So, yeah, that is uh, Jurassic World Aftermath. Um, now let's uh, jump into releases. Have we got any releases next week? <laughs> I've got a few. Know. Yeah, I've got a few. I've got one that I'm excited about anyway. Got I know that for sure. A couple of things that uh, launched a couple of days ago as well, I'll mention. So, okay, go for um, it. Cool. So for the first one, uh, okay, who can guess the first game I'm going to mention? Go on, lads. Uh, for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Nope. Uh, Jurassic looking- World Aftermath. Uh, I thought you'd get that, but it's okay. Oh. So Jurassic yeah. World Aftermath, which only just, I know, because sometimes we have a couple of days overlap. This, this, as you guys mentioned, landed as a surprise. It's on Quest, 25 bucks. I'm going to keep this very short, 19 pounds. Yeah. We've already talked this to death. Uh, it's a suspenseful survival VR game. There are raptors and features include thrilling gameplay. All right, short enough for you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, no. so there you go, 17th. This only just landed very, so if you're like wondering, like, where did this come from? Out of the blue, right? Out of the blue. Uh, we didn't know this was coming. Next one. Um, I think drumming experiences in VR are underrated. I really do. Um, and there's another one that's just landed. Same day as Jurassic World Aftermath. So while, while a bunch of you were playing around with your little dinosaurs, Ragnarok has dropped for PC VR. For 20 bucks, 15 49 in pounds uh, from the studio Wanna Dev Studio. Um, this is a game that was originally about a year ago out in arcades that they have modified for uh, at-home use. You can get six players racing in a rowboat where you are the drummer for the rowers in the rowboat. And you're, it's a race. So you're drumming in a kind of a Beat Saber type style or a, what's, what's the Guitar Hero style? Um, and you're basically leading your Viking ship to victory. Now you have a couple of modes in this, so it's not strictly just multiplayer, um, but one of the things I have to say is the Celtic rock and the Viking power metal that they have in this game is really unique. You haven't heard this in other games and it really feels like you're a fucking Viking. It's really quite cool. It looks amazing. This is an awesome game concept that I had a few people in my audience tell me about this and I was like, oh yeah, we're gonna play this because this this looks really fun. Six players, as I said, I'll just reiterate that. It does have support for custom songs, albeit only in single player. Custom and in song. single player as well, you can also race against yourself in like a ghost ship. Now, just a point. Uh, what I'm showing you is actually footage from the arcade experience from a year ago. The current experience, you can see it on, on Steam. It's available on Steam for you. But essentially for our audio listeners, you're in a boat, you're at the head of the boat, you're drumming away, right, with uh, with four lanes of drum notes. Music is banging around in the background. It's a relatively simple game. Um, but the idea is you're racing against other people, like public lobbies of six players, for example, you can play against, and you've got this kind of badass score behind the game. So what do you guys think of that? It, game of I the year. I think it looks awesome. This is game the game of the, of the year. year. No, but it's it's really, I, I think it's really funny. I think this is very entertaining. And I do understand what is, this is like, uh, this game from arcades. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this is a great example of like where you can take an arcade and bring it home 
and then make it like a simple game, but it's like fun. You're like racing against friends or even uh, someone publicly. What I didn't pick up was, is there VoIP? Because I think that would be a really important part, like the option to have VoIP in the game. So I hope it has it, but I don't, I don't know. Mm. So you go. Okay. So if you're into Viking uh, music races, wow. uh, it's a Viking rhythm race is what they call themselves, uh, mm -hmm. then there you go. That's Ragnarok just dropped on PC VR. Now, the next one I've been keeping an eye on for quite some time, and it is now coming out in early access. Uh, this game is, to my surprise, not a multiplayer experience, but is rather a, a up to four player co-op. It's called Crunch Element. So Crunch oh, Element, Crunch Element, yeah. We've been yeah. we've been waiting for for quite a mm. while, and now they've released it on the 19th of December. This is Dream Lab XR. And what this is, if you think of the game Firewall, uh, which was a 4v4 on PSVR, it's very much kind of a milsim, tactile combat, CQB, that means close quarters combat, uh, skill-based shooter, but with one important selling point, destructible terrain. So the compound walls are made of concrete. You can blow them up with explosives and get yourself and your co-op mates into the building. Um, the layouts of the compounds themselves are actually procedural, so they change every time you play, uh, and you get to, you know, blast through even even some of the uh, lighter grade materials on the inside. So you, there will actually be uh, bullet uh, shed interiors through wood and drywall, for example, inside. So when I was seeing this, and they've teased, oh my god, this is like the longest foreplay ever. They've been teasing this game I feel like for six months on Twitter, every little update that they've made, now they're coming out in early access. This game is, as I said, $20. Um, it looks great, but man, was I was shocked that Crunch Element isn't a multiplayer experience. It's co-op. Yeah. It's I, I, I would have thought six, that... Uh... Yeah, it's like Rainbow Six. But like, I would have thought for sure that its unique selling point would be two teams of four going head to head. You know, in a yeah. map like that, that would be like where, where it's like a little bit like bad company style, where everything is destroyable with Rainbow Six tactics around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it would be epic, it's great. Dude. Like like an, a multiplayer where you you hide behind a wall and suddenly have the wall flies out. Like I haven't really played something where it's like not in VR. Epic. Yeah, exactly. Not like Bad like, Company uh, Two. I mean, was is my favorite game <laughs> of all time, and yeah, and yeah. that's exactly what I what I saw when I saw this. Now co op yeah. like. I won't, I won't say bad things about them. I am going to continue to say, where's the multiplayer, guys? Uh, but they're planning to kind of continually bring features to the game. So new okay. new different building layouts. Right now, I've heard it's a little bit content-free, right? So if you're getting into it, be aware that it's quite in a... It's, it's probably unfair to call it a tech demo. But if you consider Boneworks to be a tech demo... Uh, <laughs> Oh. It's, 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 yeah. it's, you know, the technology behind it, the actual cool stuff that you can do, the, co the kind of play gameplay that you're going to get out of it for yourself. Uh, be aware of that when you're paying the price tag, you know? And then I think it's one of those that you, you'd play it now and then you'd probably wait, uh, you know, for a couple of months, wait for something more material to come in the game. Yeah. Definitely okay. uh, looks interesting though. I like I like the concept and like I'm I love co-op experiences. Well. So yeah. uh, with a destructible environment, I think it looks pretty sweet actually. Looking forward to trying this one out. Yeah, very compelling. Um, so for anyone who's got a buddy or family member member who wants to get into some uh, combat in close quarters. Now, next thing. Firstly, I'm going to give a warning. Um, so Microsoft Flight Simulator, please, if you are if 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 your wallet is suffering, it is the holidays. I understand. Please. Turn off your monitor, turn off your phone display, just look, keep listening. Don't watch the trailer because, my God, this game will make you want to buy it. Uh, and it's not cheap. So, <clears throat> okay. Um, I mean, that said, $60 will get you into Microsoft Flight Simulator. They bumped the date up by one date. Uh, one, so now instead of the 23rd, it's coming on the 22nd. Interesting little change. I don't know why. Um, the, the price for this game can be extortionate, like a lot of other flight sims. So between... $60 and $120 uh, for the premium deluxe package, there's actually a three-tier model. So you can get the base game for $60. Uh, for a bit more, you can get the deluxe package, which adds five planes and five airports. And you can get pay for the premium deluxe at $120 or £110, and you get five planes and five more airports. Oh. Um, so, so what does that mean? Like, what, what does it mean to have an extra airport? It means that the airport is fully, fully modeled. So if you land oh. at London Heathrow, it'll yeah. look like London Heathrow. And 
it, it's something that if you're an aviation fan, yeah. the extra planes are going to matter because they fly differently. The control schemes are different. Mm. The the airports, obviously, is the main point of departure and arrival. So yeah, departure, that's why yeah. that matters. But so Otherwise, you have to, like, uh, you're almost out of fuel. You're like, okay, i got to land in the sea because I don't have the airport yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, precisely that. So, okay. so the, the cool thing is this game's been out for a couple of months. Um, some of you might remember it was originally going to come out only for the G2 as an exclusive. Um, and actually now they're they're supporting a wide range of headsets. So really any headset that you've got, you, um, uh, you can play with this if you're PC VR. And the VR mode is that's coming uh, has a few features I thought I would mention. So there's a 3D mouse cursor so that while you're in VR, you're able to interact with the usual in-game menus. Obviously, you've got the usual VR thing, natural head turning, make you feel really immersed as a pilot. Uh, one thing I'm going to mention as well, the footage that we're showing was captured in Windows Mixed Reality Portal. And like most content picked up there, it looks a little bit choppy. I wouldn't make that uh, scare you just yet, but remember the requirements for the game are quite high. Um, the other thing I would say is that there are uh, packages of content releasing for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Some are paid, some are free. The trailer I'm running is actually one of the United States updates, which landed for free about a month ago. And there is actually a planned helicopter DLC as well coming sometime in Q1. So if you are up for playing and flying some light body, wide body planes, um, it has features such as live weather as well. Uh, if this makes you buzzing, then get for get you know get ready get your hotas ready for MS Flight Simulator December twenty second. The update is coming for free. If you already have the game, you don't have to pay anything for it. Um, but if you haven't bought the game yet, it's going to run you between sixty bucks and one hundred and twenty if you want the full suite. Unless you have Game Pass, right? Then you already have it. Unless you have Game Pass, yeah, I think it's in involved in Game Pass actually. Um, yeah, game Pass costs what like ninety a year. Um, so. Anyway, if you're already on Game Pass, look for Microsoft Flight so Simulator. What is the minimum frame rate to still enjoy this? <laughs> Four frames a second, Nathy. Four? Four frames a second. Okay. It's a slideshow. It's just I, a very I, I, beautiful slideshow. It's slide postcard show. mode. Yeah. Or it should work. It should work for me. I think this has the potential to be one of the best looking VR games available. You know, like with the dynamic weather and stuff like that, I think it's going to look phenomenal in VR. So I'm super excited for this. I, th I think it's I think it's absolutely incredible. I mean, one thing I would be remiss. There's a couple of mentions here I want to give um, once once we're finished with Microsoft Flight Sim, <laughs> but it, it's a game that like every time I look at it, it's just it just makes me want to spend a feck ton of money, and that's why I'm scared of it. There's a few yeah. games like that, but this is one of them. Um, there's another game. If you don't have a lot of money, then the other game that that will you know if if, if you really get into it could could cost you a couple thousand um, is DCS. So DCS is one of the leading flight sims on Steam. And they're going to run into a period of free-to-play access for two weeks, starting on, guess when? The 22nd, <laughs> until the 5th of December. So if you can bear to wait out the two weeks post-launch, let VR get itself smoothed out a little bit, um, there's a free-to-play access period for DCS, where all of its content can be played for free, and they've got sales of 30 to 50% on a lot of the planes and add-ons for the game. So DCS yeah. is another one to check out uh, for free. So that's a good one. Don't miss that. They do that once a year, um, and I missed it last time, so I'm definitely playing it this period. If you missed last week, we talked about Squadrons getting a recent update. You can yeah. do you know, Squadrons as well. So you've got Microsoft Flight Simulator, DCS, and Squadrons. Um, a couple of other things just to mention. Uh, there was an amazing trailer that landed uh, from Oculus earlier this week, which was probably the most badass trailer that I've seen Oculus ever produce. And yeah. it, at the end of it, um, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ruin the punchline here. So hands down when I'm finished ruining that. But there's a punchline where Lady chucks a, um, an Xbox controller, essentially, uh, yeah. for a dog to pick up, basically saying... Uh, P, you know, PC VR? Nah, it's VR Master Race, boys. And it is just a beautiful, wonderfully shot thing. It goes through all these great things. It's got Medal of Honor in there. It's got it's got Pop 1. Uh, it's got Saints and Sinners. There, there's like bits of this that you haven't seen before. And even the bits that you already saw are different. So great. Absolutely fantastic. It's I just like want to say hats off to favorite, the production team because right? that trailer makes me excited for, for VR. And I've been playing it seven years now. <laughs> it's just great. 
I think they did an amazing job. And the great thing is that if you enjoy this trailer, you can watch the behind the scenes of how they made it. And I won't spoil anything, but it's actually quite interesting how they pulled this off. A oh. uh, very unique uh, method of filming this trailer. Um, but yeah, I think it does a great job in showing like that that what VR feels like. It might be a bit um, a bit misrepresented in a way yeah, because right. obviously VR doesn't look like that VR, right now. VR, but VR needs this. VR but, needs but, these ads. But it, it, that's the thing. It, it nails the way that you feel in VR, and I think that's the important yeah. point to 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 put put here. It also but yeah, shows I think they did an amazing uh, job. Um, it also shows where the money is. Mm. Oh, yeah, I mean, are expensive, bro. Oh, it's man. crazy. Like, I think, I think some indie devs make make a complete game uh, of of how much money they spend on this one uh, trailer. Absolutely, but you have to. I mean, it, it, does, it does show the future, though, right? This is how how in the future VR games will yeah. start to look. Yeah, yeah. right. I, I love that. So. Yeah. I, I mean, the near that, future even. It's exactly, and and it's the, it's absolutely the future that I want for VR. Um, I think we have to keep, you know. Uh, keep chins yeah. up about the whole thing, but um, oh, it's great. I think the only thing that I, I can say, seeing this trailer, right? Because every game in this trailer is out, except for Lord. the climb, oh. and the climb two is absolutely an experience that I'm looking forward to. I loved the climb one. Some of you will know that um, I actually that's how it, like I met my wife was mountaineering and stuff. But like that feeling of being up a, a building, scaling a building, just feels so great building a mountain whatever it is something tall um and they did a great job in this trailer of blending between somebody who is scaling a building and then of course flying in pop one which is another great feeling if you haven't played pop one flying in that game you do feel yeah. a bit like a bird so totally imagine in the future where they add like a seamlessly like loading screen where you can actually fly into the next game from from Ooh. the climb so Ooh. you actually do that but then you end up in the next game but it's just a loading screen a fun one that's okay. it so that uh, yeah <laughs> navy's got some interesting dreams um but that's it yeah, for no. releases this week i'm uh it's been a very in my opinion it has been some stellar ass year for vr i think we've had a couple of very important titles um been a great been a great year keep going with releases uh but as mike said we're gonna snooze for a week and uh yeah we charge ourselves I also just want to highlight, you know, like, and I, I touched on this earlier, is that it hasn't been an easy year for developers, like, creating games. Mm -hmm. and I, I'm just, you know, it's amazing that they're still churning out games and they're still releasing games. And although sometimes we criticize them and the, 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 they don't live up to our expectations or they're not released in a certain way that we want them to be, you know, we do massively appreciate the fact that they're still working hard and, and making these things happen because, it, you know, sometimes it's nothing more than a miracle that, a game is even made you know when you look behind yeah. the scenes about all the work that goes in behind the scenes and then we pull it apart within a matter of minutes you know i do want to say that we appreciate all the developers out there that yeah. are working hard on vr content yeah. um it's 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 us. just our work in the end you know it's it's nothing personal yeah well to, to be honest i think uh, it's not but it's, uh, i just want to show that we we do we are very grateful. For, yeah, but the other the other side of that is that like I mean it's like it's like stepping up a staircase, right? I mean it is step at a time. Remember when we were debating like locomotion? Mm. It took us several years to get past like, oh God, people can't do smooth loco because it's going to make everyone vomit all over the table. Um, yeah. These are important steps, and we go through them together. And um, you know we, we we've got a place in this ecosystem, and so do developers. And uh, I think it's a great message to to send at the end of the year, Mike. So thanks for making sure yeah. to echo that. Um, so just a sort of reminder as well, we're having like an after show party, uh, an F reality Christmas party in alt space. Uh, it's going to be taking place in about an hour's time. Uh, the link to it is in the description down below. We're also going to be posting it on our Twitter and Facebook pages and probably on the YouTube uh, community page as well. So if you want to join us uh, for a little sort of hangout session, maybe we'll be there for like an hour and a half or so. Have a little bit of chat, maybe have a couple of drinks. Yeah, and, it's, all, uh, it's almost full. So if you still want to get in there, then yeah, uh, yeah. it's already going to be kind of, well, packed. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. So just a reminder, we're going to be away next week, but we'll be back on the 2nd of January. So uh, I just want to wish you all a happy holidays. Hope you have a great new year if we don't see you at the after party. And thank you for sticking around and joining us through our adventure. It's been uh, it's been an interesting year, like you say, Zim. And, uh, yes. you know, I can't wait to see what happens next year in the VR industry. And I'm sure, um, you know, we're going to be there telling you, you how it happens thank you for every listening. weekend Seriously. as we have been so yeah thank you again for joining <laughs> Until us we're gray oh wait shit
Yeah. <laughs> so, done. yeah, see you uh, in an hour if you're joining us live. If not, uh, then we'll see you in a couple of weeks' time. So, again, happy holidays. Take care happy of yourselves. Holidays. And until then, take care of yourselves. And bye-bye for now. Merry Christmas. Bye. Happy holidays. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.